And we're off. Ladies and gentlemen, we are underway with this heavyweight tilt between the Colts and the Knights. So kickoff uh, just underway Ooh. here. Nice job on the cover with Dickinson. number with a little bit of a run back. 22 the for the line. Knights. Anthony Blonda making the stop on the return by Dickinson, I believe. And again, if you're just joining us, we welcome you. SueSports.com. And Scott McPherson. With the tackle. Here with John. Houston 10 Cora from their own. Ostrowski. Looks like Thank 13 you. yard line. And uh, got a little late start here. Just finished the kickoff. All right, so we got the ball being run up the middle. Oh, nice carry. Good, hard run. The Move the pile. Moving ah, the pile. With the Almost a gain of about 13 the play on the play. 23, your ball carrier. 23 is Cole Barbo. It's like 23, big dose Cole Barbo. Cole Cole Barbo right here. up the middle. Good for about 11 yards and a first down. And yeah, that was just the rugby scrum going for way too many yards than it really should, but... 11 yards nonetheless for the Cora Colts. You love to see that first play of the game, everybody getting in the action a little bit. And again, Colts uh, with the first and 10 from the 25-yard line. They do the sweep out to Gazzetti. Gazzetti, of course, they're trying to contain him. Outside to Gazzetti. Had a one whale of a game last He's time. Four touchdowns and over 400 yards Ethan on the Aruda. ground. So Cap. Ethan Aruda and the Knights Matheson. happy to make the stop. With Grant the Matheson in on the helper there. And uh, obviously the St. Mary's Knights looking to shut down and limit. You'll never stop uh, Nathan Gazzetti, but uh, attempting to limit. And that was a nice job on the first uh, sweep to limit him to a uh, gain of one yard on the play. So it brings up second and nine. Well, we get started here. We just wanted to say a big shout out to Lenny Monaco, who's watching in hospital and uh, recovering nicely, and uh, hopefully that he's uh, rooting on his uh, St. Mary's Knights as his son Jimmy uh, up the middle. leads these Knights into battle against this formidable foe, the uh, Cora Colts. With the, so. the Valentin and Colin Mead. Colin Mead and DeValentin on the so stop the there. The Brings up, up third, third and six. six. So a nice start uh, with what uh, Coach Monaco was looking for for these St. Mary's Knights. Cole, uh, Cora Colts looking to punt here on third down. Looks like number 19, Koski, will be back to do the kicking duties. Jaden Trudeau on the return with for the Knights. So Knights all rolled up. Big boot. Nice boot. Received by Trudeau. And Trudeau's got a lane, he's got a chance, he's got to make the corner, he's going to take it down the sideline, he's got a chance to tight roll. Oh, all the way down and he stays in bounds and it looks like it is going to be wow. a touchdown, St. Oh, Mary's Knights. What a play, Trudeau. what a run, Jaden Trudeau, absolutely nasty, just getting Trudeau takes it out, out, yards outpacing the, the entire defense, 66 yards to the house, making the core cold special teams look foolish. And, and if you're the St. Mary's Knights, you got to be grinning from ear to ear right now. Absolutely. And uh, nice job uh, walking the tightrope as Jaden Trudeau pulled along the sidelines and able to hang on and tuck it inside the cone there. And yep. Here we go with an extra point. They overload the quads as they've done before, looking for Carter, bringing it back in. Oh, wow. A lot of mixed plays. The quad overload wasn't working, so they elect to go back, and Carter drills it through for the easy extra Quick point. 7 nothing. St. Mary's Knights off to a rock and start here. Nice. After that uh, punt return for a touchdown by Trudeau. A nice punt by the uh, punter, but uh, you put it in the hands of number 14. He's electric, and he's able to make it down, and he's a game, game breaker like there are several in this game. So... Uh, Apologize for the late start. Uh, we realize we're live and uh, <laughs> on before the game, so uh, we apologize as we're running through the lineup. Hopefully we uh, uh, kept it PG, and uh, we're looking forward to bringing you a great game. Coach, uh, hoping that the rain's going to hold off, but uh, what have you got in store for us today? I think it's going to be more of this. Uh, three minutes into the game, already seven points on the board. We're going to see these uh, high-powered offenses going back and forth. Uh, I think it might be... Uh, you know, a 44-35 type of game, like a high-scoring affair today. So a shootout here is what we're calling for. It's a beautiful night for uh, football. We're glad you joined us here at the Sergeant uh, Fought Fieldhouse at Superior Heights, where earlier you saw the uh, Cora Colts Juniors uh, dominate the St. Mary's Knights in, in mm -hmm. junior action. 
But uh, this is the heavyweight tilt everybody's been looking forward to seeing. Um, as I said, we're off to a slow start here. We just got uh, in after the kickoff. We're uh, excited to bring you this tonight. Sponsored by SueSports.com and True Host Radio. We're glad you could join us. Yep. And uh, this is a great Thanksgiving weekend. We're glad to have you here, either in person or live on the radio, watching on streaming as the St. Mary's Knights kick off deep to the seven. Looks like 26. There's another, Blonda, tackle by Blonda. Blonda. another special teams delivery for Mr. Bond. Hunter Dickinson with a decent return gets out to about the 20. Dickinson out to the 20. He bought a 13 yard return on that with Dickinson running. So. Uh, looking like they're going to stay away from Gazzetti on the return games at least, uh, and they'll have to shut him down on the running game. So a nice little start for St. Mary's to put a little buffer, 7-0 uh, early. Just what uh, they were hoping to do is get off to a great early start, hoping to do with their offense, but the special team uh, comes through for them on the punt return by Jaden Trudeau. Nice inside run. Going nowhere. Up. Developing, actually, he's got loose. Oh, wow. Nice wow. run by 26. Very good hard run. Bales. Nope. So it was 23, 23. Barbo. Yeah, that makes Cole more sense. Barbo. Cole Barbo, Refusing number 23. So a nice uh, two headed monster here with uh, 23. Uh, Cole Barbo gained the hard yards and uh, he and Nathan Nathan Gazzetti Jaden Trudeau looking to get outside. Eventually with the tackles. And Trudeau They're with the tackle in. Second a, and nine for the two way Colts. player, a fantastic receiver. Yeah. And uh, they're both in to help with the uh, tackle number four. And here we go. We've got the Gazzetti. He's going to look outside. Oh. Stopped up early by number two, Noah DeValentin. So a nice job by these uh, St. Mary's Knights to uh, yeah, wow. shut the door so Gazzetti far. Gazzetti with the carry, but he's met immediately by and Noah DeValentin, who goes in untouched. It doesn't. Uh, down. You're not going to try to stop uh, the score of court offense. You just have to limit it. And in the first two series, they've done a nice job shutting it down. From the 23-yard uh, line, looks like the Colts are bringing back to punt. Um, looks like Ethan Carbone might be back doing the punting duties. Number, looks like number 14, if I'm not mistaken. Usually Ty Koski has the kicking duties for the Colts. And but it's uh, the procedure against Cora. Maybe Carbone getting a few licks in there uh, as the punter. I'm sure you'll see Koski if he's uh, available, kicking the extra points and the field goals tonight. So, again, uh, off to a great start. Uh, St. Mary's offense hoping to get on track here, maybe spread this 7-0 uh, lead. And that is 14, Trudeau back to receive the punt. Oh, nice wow. job by Vecchio almost getting in to block that punt. So not a great punt. Angles out of bounds about the 39. Punt goes out of bounds, shy of the 40-yard line. But nice place for the uh, Knights to start off in uh, Colts territory. So a little uh, unexpected to start for the Colts. Uh, um, but I'm sure a lot, a lot of game left here and lots of ups and downs and ebbs and flows in this game will produce a, a great football game. So on this Thanksgiving weekend, we just wanted to thank you for joining us. I want to thank all our friends far and near and uh, our friends up in Botswana. We give thanks to Ellen and all our cousins. We'll see you on Monday. Looking forward to joining you for some turkey. All the people that traveled uh, home for this weekend, glad to have you back. Come on out. To the field house for some great football action. St. Mary's on the freeze. Oh, nobody, yeah, nobody. Uh, Bad snap. Tucker's got to pick it up and run with it. He's going to get taken down. Taken Low down by number 60. By he Spencer up and tackled almost immediately. And again, we talked about it in the junior game. Is this weather going to play a factor? The wet balls, the uh, wet field. Spencer uh, had some rain early. It uh, looks clear and clean right now, fact. but uh, maybe that That's had something to do with that bad snap. Five and a half so. yards. Both Such teams will want to uh, shore that up as we go. Here we Brings go. up second and fifth, almost 16 yards. So, St. Mary's on Cora's 45-yard line. Tucker switches, hitches it out to the sidelines. 14 number 14 Ju uh, Trudeau, sorry, takes it, but uh, stop the throw. Progress before he gets back to the line of scrimmage. And that'll bring up third and a punt situation. We do have a flag on the play at the 45 yard line. Will be a flag on the play as well. Oh, flag over on this side, probably an offside against uh, St. Mary's. So it'll probably be declined and bring up that third down situation. So. 
Again, a couple of stalls on the offensive side of the ball. The side against the There's two high-flying offenses that we talked about, uh, but uh, like I said, I'm sure both offenses are going to get un unhitched for a few big gainers today. So, yeah. So again, thank you for joining us. I'm Scott McPherson, joined by uh, John Ostrowski. We are here, finally underway, 7.38 to go. St. Mary's with an early lead. And again, uh, as I mentioned earlier, a big shout out to Lenny Monaco, who's uh, cheering on his uh, St. Mary's Knights. And hope you're feeling great, uh, Coach Len. And uh, you're going to be our good luck charm today for these uh, St. Mary's Knights. Tucker back to pass. He's under pressure. He's got 94. He's got oh. him under the grass. The ball is loose. It hits the deck. And it looks like the Cora Colts have yeah. recovered. Aston Sachin with the strip Sh sack. Sachin with the strip. Picked up by number 51, one. Ethan Carcini with the with recovery. That's just a huge play for the Cora Colts. Looks like on their own, you 47. Did. If you say Mary's, you don't want Cora to get any any sort of momentum just knowing what they can do, but they have it here. And, of course, Ethan Karkidi, the uh, Cora's Swiss Army knife, uh, went in to fill in for his cousin when he went down a couple weeks ago, Caleb Thibodeau, who's uh, inactive today, but... Uh, on the mend and may, ready to make his uh, return soon, but uh, Ethan doing the job on uh, defense here, but uh, yeah. even a great runner in, in the substitute uh, capacity for the Colts. He, he'll do anything for his special teams, offense, defense. He's a great, uh, great athlete. There's that ball out to Barbo. Barbo's oh, Barbo. got a few yeah. yards on the stop, but uh, that defensive end defensive line for the uh, St. Mary's Knights seems to be doing a great job with uh, Derbolka. Number 96 yeah. calling me number to the Noah Devalentin, 96, calling me. Marking at the 51. That'll be the second big, and Big boys up front the uh, setting the tone early for these Knights defense. Yeah, and uh, like you said, St. Mary's defensive line just won that battle on that play. If they can consistently win the battles on the line, here they are going from a five-man to a four-man before the snap. If they can consistently win uh, these battles, they're going to put themselves in a really good chance to win. Ah, and there's uh, Gazzetti getting loose, and I Huge told you he's going to be a difference maker right in the, the game. And for about Enough for about 20 yards. yards. Maybe Enough 20 on the first down. First down on the play. So, again, there's that 25. Kian Derboka. Showing Boa. why he's Boa, uh, number 40 in one of the, the fastest in the league, Mary's. if not the fastest. Able to St. slice 43. through and gain a nice uh, piece of real estate. Yeah. Well, 42 yards line is the start for the next uh, set of downs for these Colts. Eric Martone. Gives the hop over to Gazzetti. They're going to have to oh. turn it inside. They got him by a string, but he's able to Fixed gain another Gazzetti 14, 15 yards. 14 yards wow, another first man, again, 97. Tackle by number 20, stop. 97. Marcus, stop. Marcus Provo on the stop, but they had about three or four Knights with his hand on him. They just couldn't bring him down. And with his power and speed, he's able to get to the outside. And uh, they had a nice job containing him. The defensive end was uh, rolled up and pushed back inside, but... Uh, he was unable to make the con the contact and the tackle, so yeah. Rosetti gets another few yards. So, 5:28 to go. First down from the 27. Ball handed up to Cole Barbo. And a bit of misdirection. They go right up the middle. His job will be to gain the short yards and the hard yards up the middle to set up that outside for Gazzetti. And uh, Knights have done a Not pretty sure good job with gain. Barbo, but uh, got an injury on. The nope, looks like. St. Mary's Knights. Noah DeValentin, number two with the tackle. On his feet. Noah DeValentin having a great game already. His name called three times with the stops. Have an injury timeout. Timeout. And oh. we do have an injury timeout. Yeah, so. injury timeout. And that is that uh, aforementioned Noah DeValentin, so hopefully he's uh, feeling great. And he's got a little, uh, jumps to his feet. Tough customer. Big red, number two. Going to hobble off, but uh, I'll have to take his mandatory couple uh, plays off, and he'll, yeah. be, ba he'll be back to uh, wreak havoc in that backfield again shortly. And again, you got the uh, vaunted Cora offense uh, coach, so I know you can't just key on Gazzetti because they have so many different weapons, but uh, you can expect a big run game here from the Colts, not really known for their passing game, Looks but like yeah. second and the wing, for wing the key offense that they run is obviously very effective and potent. So, uh, don't need to be able to pass when your run game is so effective, really. So the job is a tall order for the Knights, and uh, 
Martone hands it off to Gazzetti. A double, double return. There's Ethan Kartikiti with the ball. So, and again, that's, a, to that's the luxury that uh, Gazzetti presents as everybody's the Boca. The Boca gets waving to the ball as they the expect the ball to go to Gazzetti, and they do a back uh, reverse inside to Karkidi, and they're going to get the... Uh, they did a nice job of defending that. Yep. Um, and only limiting to what they did, uh, third and one now on the play, so... I'm assuming it'll be a straight ahead dive with Cold Barbo here, but uh, the OC for the Cora Colts is always full of surprises, so they need one to move the sticks. 16 to get, motion. get to the end zone. There's Cole oh, Barbo wow. up the middle. Nice off the barbo. He gets loose. And he escapes and gets some good yardage. No, making make good Vecchio. penetration 91. in the back, uh, back oh, field. And, with the tackle. and a good surge of the defensive uh that's a first down side of the, the ball. Boys. I think these St. Mary's College uh, Knights are going to have to come with a uh, tackling by committee and bring a few more uh, men to bring down these uh, struff, uh, tough Cora runners, yeah. such as Barbo and uh, Gazzetti. Uh, Cole, uh, Cohen Carrillo in on that play for the Knights. Inside the five. And Martone hands off Ooh. to Cole Barbo, who is met at the line after its one yard Good game. Contact. But a beautiful stop. We do Looks have like a is in play. on the play. Number 20. Uh, we'll get you that number shortly, but uh, a nice big stop at the line there. Almost looked like the back stopped on a dime there and gave change. But uh, a nice, nice play by the defense on the St. Mary's side. Uh, Looks like that'll be second down from the four, or is it? Looks like second down from the five. From the five, okay. Yep. All right, so Cora Colts marching, hoping to answer that 7 uh, nothing lead from uh, St. Mary's established with the punt return by a Trudeau in for the touchdown. So again, a uh, high-scoring shootout anticipated here. Two great ball teams, one and two in the division. Yep. Cora Colts with an undefeated record of 5-0 and oh, looking to or 4-0 oh, uh, looking to extend that and uh, obviously the St. Mary's Knights trying to upend the uh, the defending champions so Ooh. nice job hand side handout nice stop by the St. Mary's Knights was wow. a nice stop I didn't see the tackler on that one but uh, unable to get Pretty it to the end zone the Colts. Gets, looks like he's down at the one down at the one Colin so. Mead Paul Mead gives, gets credit for the uh, tackle for the St. Mary's Knights. And uh, here, like you said before, a bar, a yard off the ball, this is a easy run or yep. easy call, at least for me, either do a under center quarterback keep or quick hitting power. They give it to the fullback. There it is. And he Touch takes down. Down. Go, go. with the touchdown. Love so. the fullback dive. Absolutely. Bravo. And again, Mazzetti does all of the long, hard, heavy it. lifting, and then Cole <laughs> Barbo takes it in from one, although a tough one for Barbo, but he did a nice uh, job of surging. Offensive line, obviously getting a lot of credit there. And St. Mary's making a few big stops there, but not enough to uh, stop this uh, this score of Colts defense, which we mentioned so so many times. Yeah. It's so powerful. They put up some big numbers and some big yards for, for in all of their games this season. So you can expect... Uh, not much of a defensive battle, but these offenses are going to flex their muscle here. And there's the extra point, and it looks like it's good. No signal Kick yet. Kick is up and good. And we it is calls the tie ball good. game with just under three minutes left in the first quarter. 7-7 seven, seven is your score. 2.49 to go in a first quarter that uh, seems to fly by. Uh, quick game so far. Some great action, some great long balls, some uh, great special teams action. Some excellent kicking. And uh, that's just what uh, we expected from this heavyweight matchup. Uh, so please don't go anywhere. Settle in for a nice Friday night lights. Got a great action here at the uh, field house. And glad you can join us on this Thanksgiving weekend. While we wait for the uh, kickoff, I just wanted to put a shout out to uh, Muzzy and his family. Melissa, Maya, Ella, Ter and Grandpa Terry who are there watching uh, Jack, they visit all the way from uh, London for this fine uh, Thanksgiving weekend and all the other people that uh, are home for the holidays and uh, hope you enjoy a great weekend with friends and family and get some turkey in you and uh, enjoy this fine football weekend. Yep, this will be my uh, first Thanksgiving in the Sault Ste. Marie. So oh, I'm, fantastic. I'm, yeah, I'm happy to 
happy to be here. Be uh, Trudeau, broadcasting bro. some Cora Colts St. Mary's football. Nice. It's uh, it's been a great season so far. Yeah, it has been very exciting. Yeah, We're awesome. glad to have you here on SueSports.com, and hope you can stay with <laughs> us for lots cool. of seasons and lots of sports. Of course, SueSports.com, your home for all local sports, high school and college. Trudeau again with the ball. He's looking for a seam. He's looking for oh, something to develop. He gets goodness. loose, and he's. Going to be brought down, but not after a nice little return out to Trudeau. the 40 yard line. Beautiful run makes a few he is people just miss so him shifty he and He's brought down by the 40 yard line. It looked like it was number 26, uh, Arwin Shafee. Number four, Mason Batacchio. Also, number four, Mason Batacchio in on that tackle. First down for the St. Mary's Knights. And of course, um, St. Mary's trying to answer uh, what was an impressive drive by the Cora Colts. And uh, we mentioned before. Tucker getting up into the air and doing that aerial attack with those uh, awesome um, receiving core that he has. But uh, they also have bolstered their running back game with uh, number 31, Harley Wardell, Wardell back in the tailback position. And Carmen Blonda in a oh. fullback spot. Right on the play. St. Mary's looks like the right tackle there. Might have moved their, the tight end in motion. Or, Jumping early, so they'll bring that back five. That'll be procedure against St. Mary's. First and 15 becomes the call for the St. Mary's Knights. We'll see if that'll change their play call. Can't uh, can't give these core Colts any sort of advantage. And penalties in this uh, loop could be uh, co very costly for you. He drops back. Nice job, Tucker, open. Nice throw, put that ball away. As number 28, Pass I think that's Harney. 20, Carton. Landon Jacarton. He oh, gets out past 20, the 40. 20 is the receiver my bad. It was Landon Jacarton. Gets Ethan Carcidi with the tackle. Reception. Carcidi on the tackle. Looks like a gain of both seven. So cut the difference in half. Make it second and seven. So nice job of Tucker completing that pass. Getting the ball to Jacarton. And again, much depth at that uh, receiver court I uh, core I mentioned uh well, obviously, we talk about Trudeau and Carter and McPherson and Carton number four, but uh, not much of a drop off for uh, for those receivers. So here we go. The ball is thrown. Nice, nice screen pass to Carter. Oh, he's able that's to make a leap. And, uh, Good little sideline pass. Steps out of bounds like about the uh, 52. But, out of uh, nice pass and catch by a tr a Tucker. Looks like they're marking at about the 54 yard line. And a couple of these uh, short dumps so to the uh, flats might, uh, yards and a first down for might, the might have the secondary and the corners biting up and uh, may end up seeing something going vertical with uh, a lot of the speed merchants like Carter and Trudeau on the fly here. So yep. um, we haven't seen much of the running game yet, but I uh, expect to see a dose of uh, Blonda and Wardell here. Uh, Tucker back in the shotgun, takes the hand off, or the snap, rolls out. Takes the handoff. Tucker scrambles and throws it out of bounds. Overthrows Carter. And the ball is out of bounds. Incomplete. That'll bring up second and ten. So weren't, weren't able to make it up to uh, Thunder Bay to visit uh, family and friends? Or? Nope. I, uh, it's a little too expensive to fly for Thanksgiving. So I will be uh, spending it with my girlfriend and her grandma. She just lives right across the street at the Finnish rest home. So she'll be making us a turkey. And I'll be going to uh, visit everybody up at home on the 21st through the 29th. That's my reading week. So able to save three, four hundred dollars on flights. Can't really complain with that. No, nope. there's the ball swung out to the uh, Wardell. He's got some speed. He's able to make people miss. Ooh. There's a high Turn tackle, out. but uh, no flag on the play. With the catch, and brought down by He's number taken down 60. He's by number 60, Spencer Hedrick. Spencer but not after Hedrick about six, seven yards. Gained about six or seven, but a tough tackle and. Wardell bounces up, which is a good sign for the Knights. Nice job of Tucker spraying the ball around the different receivers, different locations. Going to have to keep these core Colts uh, defense guessing. Short of the first down, so they'll be forced to punt. Yeah, and I'm, I'm a bit surprised knowing the St. Mary's uh, aggressive nature that you're seeing the punt. Uh Punt formation out. You're in the core. Uh, punt team out the And there's a bit of a... We're able to stop them already Steve once today, so there's a bit of a... You know, it's time to go for it, but regardless, they will be Take back Carter to punt. And Carter's back to kick. He boots one high into the sky, and it's brought down by number 51. Ball's loose. It's on the ground, looking for a fumble recovery. 
Looks like somebody had it. Able to be retrieved by the Colts by the looks of it. Cartini, Cartini was hop. able to take it on the hop and retain possession, but a tough bounce and a Derboca first through it as bounce for Cartini. Derboca on the stop. Special teams of the Knights. For the Knights. And again, fortunate for Karkidi to get that bounce right back into his hands and uh, maintain possession for these Colts. So we take over on the 14-yard line. 22.1 seconds to go in a lightning speed uh, first quarter. Glad you could join us here. Don't go anywhere. we got a great night of football for you. Martone under center. He's got Kizetti on the end around. He's got loose. Able to gain about seven yards on the play. Is that with the carry? And again, just so elusive oh. as we get a flag late. Oh, looks like a few. And a little hostilities as yeah. tempers flare. I believe 20. Jakarta was on the tackle, but we have flags after some shenanigans. Shenanigans say fill the tackle. <laughs> looks like that'll move one direction. We'll see who gets the infraction. Could be offsetting penalties. That's also a possibility, so we will see. Cameras, or uh, microphone's on for the referee, so we get to hear all the discussion. He's obviously turned it off now, so. Uh, I assume they'll do one more play. Uh, yeah. Clock is at zero. In Canadian football, you always do the one final play, as opposed to American football, where the, uh, the quarter would just switch. Okay. So we're hearing the referee's conversation. They're going to tell us who uh, is a guilty party on the infraction. Here comes the signal from referee Grev, is I believe. Or is that still referee Edwards? I'm not sure. So again, uh, regardless, Cora Colts will be taking deep, taking the ball deep in their territory and uh, hoping to march again. 7-7, seven, seven, your score here. And uh, just a reminder as we wait for the call here that... Uh, this evening, Wendy's Sault Ste. Marie and Team Essentials will team up with Sioux Sports to honor the top athlete of the game during all of our Sioux Sports TV streams of these regular and postseason games. Each game, the announcers will select a player from each of the teams where they will be awarded a Wendy's gift card and Team Essentials tee for athlete of the game. So some early favorites are already just making their uh, case for being the athlete of the game and... Uh, Obviously, lots of game left to play, but uh, we will hopefully bring that to you as uh, these stand out to emerge in the game. So, I guess we didn't quite get the signal, so I'm assuming it's offsetting these penalties. Yeah. As, uh, yeah, and it's their uh, roughness both ways, it looks like. So. so, it looks like some bad blood between Roughly the two of them, but uh, offsetting penalties. roughing offset, offsetting penalties, no movement on the line of scrimmage another big uh, scrum in the middle that will be the end of the first quarter we're tied at seven short after game. one and that may be short so it might be a uh, bring up a third down situation depending on the spot yeah it looks like they're gonna be short by about one yard so they'll move the zones so Cole Barbo with the carry Cole Barbo in on a short carry but That's again too short quarter. for for a first down, so Just a reminder, bring up are uh, open. decision time for the Hot coaches. Beverages, I think deep, this deep and, uh, in, the, in the zone in a close game like this, pizza. you'll punt it away, though, and yeah. live oh, to yeah. fight another day. That's uh, a little risky if you give uh, that offense a short field for the uh, St. Mary's Knights. So you'll probably see a punt coming up unless something differs on the chains. And again, at the, at, the, at the quarter, rather, we will thank our corporate, champi uh, corporate champions here on Superior Catholic District School Board, Northern Sports Excellence, Freeze Frame Photos by Bob Davies, Wendy's of Sault Ste. Marie, Team Essentials, Maximum Rose, Maximus Rose, Elite 8 Basketball Academy, and True House Sports Radio. And if your business is interested in uh, supporting local sports, please contact, uh, contact us at suesports at gmail.com, and uh, we can highlight your business and... Uh, indicate your support for these uh, wonderful athletes. So. Yep. so at the quarter, 7-7, seven, seven, your score. A great start to a great ball game. It's going to be a long game with uh, lots of uh, fireworks here. Some great offenses, two great offenses, and great, two great defenses alike. Uh, but uh, the offenses are much heralded. 
the running game for these Colts and the passing game for these uh, Knights, but uh, you can expect a big game. There's a oh, bad no. snap. Oh, oh, there's a block on the kicker, and they're going to... What's the call there? Interesting. So, bobble the snap. So there's a tip on the snap. One of the, get the offensive off. players... Knights will take oh, over. snap, it was tipped, so I don't know if that in, oh, automatically knocks the, the, yard line. the play dead, but oh, uh, the Colts. punter was able to get it away, but the referee deemed that it was a dead ball foul, so no flags on the play. So is that... Oh, that means the same area's offense will take over here, and... A confusing play there. I'm not quite sure how they were going to explain that, but uh, I thought it would still be a live ball on a, on a yeah, deflection. But uh, interesting for we'll sure. To, we'll have to get clarification on that. We'll bring it to you if they are able to provide us with that. So Tucker back in the shotgun. Looking to pass. He's going to go up in the deep to Carter. Oh, oh and a nice try to adjust and make a one-handed catch by Carter in the near, the near the end zone. Goes for Nate Carter. I think Tucker wanted to air that up, put a little pillow underneath it, and go a little deeper into but the end zone. But that ball is Regardless, incomplete on first down brings second and ten. And uh, not a great throw. Just kind of overshot it a little bit. So I think now you look to stay on the ground, maybe look to something on the outside, and we'll see what the St. Mary's Knights do here. Still got really favorable field position, so no reason to panic just yet. And motion kind of muffed there. They're going to restart. Nice job. Oh, another throw again. There goes the ball to McPherson. McPherson, 81. He's going to make, break a tackle. Get him the close to the first down. I Thanks think he's McPherson. got enough to move the sticks. In the flats for a boat. And all he Ten needed was one little break of that, uh, that last tackler, and he might have had some extra, but enough for the first down, which is... Yep, first down, St. Mary's Knights. There you go. Fantastic for the Knights as 81 hauls it in and gains a couple extra yards to bring the chains to the 20. So inside the red zone, nice completion, nice fake. I thought they were going to Wardell on the ground, as you called, but uh, Tucker able to look downfield and find his receiver. First down inside the 20. Tucker in shotgun again. Ball snapped. Nice snap. He's Another looking deep. Throw. He's got... Carter, wide open, no Pass. catch. Ball was caught, but if it is caught. It's out of bounds. It's out of ruled out of bounds. Wow, Second I think down. he did catch that ball too, which is very unfortunate because that that took quite the effort. That was a again a great uh, job by uh, Carter to haul it in, but uh, nice job of the defender to force him out of bounds, and uh, of course you got to get the feet in to make yep. it count. I think it's one foot in. One foot in this league, yeah. I believe you're right. But uh, good call by the official in the end zone right on top of it. Is it sack? third down then, right? Yeah. Third down, so they're going to go for it rather than take the points on the field goal. No. Yeah, sure. Sorry, I do believe it is second down, yeah. Oh, there's Hart the Wardell getting a chance to scamper inside, inside the 10, and that'll move the sticks, and there's a late flag. Hand off to Wardell. He gets inside so the 10. That'll probably cut the distance down. to inside the five-yard line. We do have a flag on the play. Nice job by Tackle Wardell. By three, Evan Novello. Evan we'll Novello on the tackle for Cora. We'll see what the flag is here. And, of course, you look at Wardell, not quite as quick as Gazzetti, but uh, very elusive, very escapable, as, uh, as is Gazzetti. And you saw that with number 31. Impressive in that it's only his first year of playing so football. face mask against Cora. Uh, oh, face wow. mask against Cora. So that will take him inside the five and uh, bring up a first down that was earned on the run by Wardell. On one yard line. One yard line. After the penalty is tacked on, first down. So here's where you bring in your big package and... Surprised to see Tucker back in shotgun. I would be up on center. Maybe he'll roll up. Nope. He's looking to pass. Oh, wow. And it, oh, hey. out. it goes Pass through to Trudeau. Touchdown. One to one. Wow. And, and we got to give credit to the OC for having the stones to pull that one because on the one, that's uh, risky for a pick six. It yeah. goes all the way. You got a single coverage over to Trudeau, but uh, obviously they saw something in film that uh, warranted that and. Uh, it pays off, so looks like a genius. Beautiful ball delivered, Tucker, to Trudeau for the touchdown. 13-7, your score, and again, back and forth. We're going to have a seesaw battle here, Coach, and uh, the Knights here looking to 
get the extra point. I think the smart money is just to kick the extra single, but they're bringing in the big, big hoss in there. Running in 95 from the sideline. They're going to set up. And up and over for the extra point, making Pick it a 14-7 game. So keeping the distance at a converted touchdown. St. Mary's. Nice, nice call on the play. Although I'm nervous because at some point you might risk a uh, time clock violation moving out all these yeah. from the quad back into the uh, extra point formation. and Let's, yeah, let's hope that doesn't bite them moving forward but uh, yeah it's a little unorthodox to go with it as much as they do yeah and a nice uh, nice march down the field and uh nice score for the st mary's knights uh staying on top here and 10-0-1 to go in the quarter or in the half rather and uh, coach you got to be impressed with this we promised you a great uh, game and yeah uh, they're not disappointing a lot of activity a lot of excitement uh, a lot of great plays and uh, both teams uh, coming ready to play and this probably is going to go down the wire, and like you said, maybe the last, uh, last team to make a mistake is going to be the one that's going to be, uh, is going to be costly for. Yeah, and the only thing I'm not liking about the game is there's a lot of penalties. Uh, it's kind of taken defenses out of games a little bit. Core with a brutal face mask penalty pretty much cost them the seven points. So both uh, teams, especially both defenses, really got to clean that up. In a game like this, you can't afford to uh, have that happen all day. Absolutely, and... Uh, you know, at the high school level, they're still a little polished. Just uh, halfway mm -hmm. through the season, you got to work out little bugs, uh, little nerves. Uh, these te Chris teenage Baker athletes, uh, and uh, they make these Baker mistakes at the pro level. So, the Colts. Um, no, worry, no surprise that uh, things happen here. Speaking of things happening, 38 makes a nice move to get loose on the pick kickoff oh. return. 96 calling meet on the stop on number 38. Dickinson makes Hunter a couple Dickinson. Misses before Colin Mead comes in and tackles him. First and ten, Cora. So a beautiful kick by the own St. Mary's line. team and a nice little return by Hunter Dickinson. Let's the cold start at about the 19. So a great, uh, great bit of action so far. Let's see if the defense for the St. Mary's Knights has anything to match this offense for the uh, Colts. They've had a little bit of their run of, of uh, things with uh, Gazzetti on the speed run, uh, Cole Barbo up the middle. I think maybe uh, St. Mary's wants to get a few more guys in the box. Not a big threat to throw the ball, but uh, always a possibility. Oh, someone jumped, but did not cross the line of scrimmage, so no penalty. Here uh, we go. Nice, nice toss outside, and that's Gazzetti by the speed. Breaks one guy. Ooh. Gazzetti with a terrific one miss, run. Gets out, runs over. Almost a 35 yard line. Slot, but Fifteen yards on the play is a nice yards in the first routine down. gain for uh, Gazzetti. Yeah. Grant Matheson. Yeah, he's just uh, on another level. He hasn't really gotten uh, going yet today, but it's only a matter of time. Start picking up 10 yards, 15 yards, 8 yards, 10 yards. Those kind of bigger first down-esque runs, you're, you're going to be doing something right. Yeah, and watching Gazzetti live, I was uh, amazed, and I had to go back and watch the replay, and I th as I was watching it on my television, I thought it was broken, so I ended up with a brand new uh, big screen TV. Sorry, hmm. Laura. Um, anyway, they're looking deep. As I said, they wouldn't be going to the oh. pass. They had a guy pass open. Pass intended for number 81, 81 Nick Caruso. Uh, Nick Caruso, big, tall receiver. But Jones' pass goes a little bit too deep. Lands had incomplete. A, had a step on uh, Jaden Trudeau, too, which is not easy to do. But, uh, again, when you're rolled up and uh, you're playing the run first, you're not anticipating that the core Colts are going to go to the air. So maybe... Uh, Colts hoping to catch them napping, and had that ball been on target, uh, Crusoe might have been able to take it uh, for, a, for a good long yep. long str stretch there. So second and 10 after the first down attempt, deep on Trudeau. Imagine we'll see it along the ground here. Barbo's in the backfield. Here comes Gazzetti with the hand it off to Gazzetti. And a nice stop there by the Colts. Oh, it's a hard run, but... And that's what they're going to hope Matthews for all day. Colin Grant Matthews and Colin Mead with the first initial contact. With the tackle on Gazzetti. And again, you got to put a hat on a, on a jersey there. And Gazzetti able to gain 3-4. Gazzetti but, uh, with the quickness still manages to get 5 yards. And if you can limit Gazzetti to 3-4-5 yards, I mean, I think you're uh, pretty happy with that, the way he's been running off these 12-15 uh, yep. yard carries. Uh, keep him to third down and... Uh, Obviously forcing them in a punt situation. 
And again, these part of, parts of the game, when they get a little closer to the midfield, is where their tendency would be to maybe fake a punt. So uh, both uh, defenses are going to have to stay at home on those situations. Oh, this one's a little deeper in the zone, but uh, kicker unable to get a goal. Well, let's kick out of bounds. Out of bounds, so that'll give St. Mary's a nice After only position. About 20, 30 yards. Carbone with the punt. So that'll give them St. Mary's Knights the ball about midfield. So as the Knights march out, Matty Tucker at the helm here. You look to stretch this 14-7 uh, lead that they currently possess against these Cora Colts. And again, you'd expect this in a big title fight. Lots of slugging back and forth. Yep. And uh, a lot of big primetime players, big play breakers. So Tucker looking to drive down the field. Big rush. Pass out, pass. To, pass out to Carter. Completed. And pass to Nate Carter. And a he nice play in Carter. The 50. Carter, if he gets his quick hands on that, is able to gain five, six yards every time. He's, yep. uh, he's a nice Ethan receiver. Ethan Scott with the tackle. Great, uh, great job making yards after the catch too which is uh, super important as a receiver gain of about uh, five on the play brings up second and five again here i'm going to look for 31 harley harley wardell to get the ball yep. wardell so, or uh Jaden trudeau and the colts seem to be using a little bit more motion in the backfield which is usually a staple for the st mary's knights but uh tucker under a little presser pocket collapsing is able to get it out to Carter. Carter makes a nice catch for the first down. Scrambling for a few yards. And it's a nice job. Nate Carter. I don't he think gets to about the 45. I don't think that Tucker realized how close that uh, chaser was Tackles. coming on him. So Logan McGregor. Nice job for him to get Mason it away. Batacchio. Mason Batacchio and Logan Gre McGregor on the stop. We do have an injury time. We have an injury down or an injured Cora Colt. So we'll take a Little pause. At that time, this time, when we take a pause for an injury timeout, we'll talk about our corporate champions, thanking here on Superior Catholic District School Board, Northern Sports Excellence, Freeze Frame Photos by Bob Davies, Wendy's of Sault Ste. Marie, Team Essentials, Maximus Rose, Elite Eight Basketball Academy, and True House Sports Radio. Be sure to join us, and if you want to join us as a sponsor for these uh, games, you can contact us at suesports at gmail.com. Make sure to tell the world you're here, share your experiences, connect with other fans, and gain behind-the-scenes access to your favorite teams in Sioux, St. Marie, and Algoma. For more information, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. As we get back to the action, we've got Tucker in the shot. And he takes a snap, he gives it to Bordell. No, he holds on to it, and he's rolling. Oh, he's getting pressure. Oh, no. And he's got four people chasing him. He's got to take it Good down. Bordell, but... And he's brought down at the, 50. at about the 50. Big sack by number 21, Logan Andresen. Ethan Sorrell. Sorrell on the Coming up stop. big for the Colts. Anderson also with the help. And again, he was running for his life. Had five, four or five uh, brown jerseys chasing him down. He's able to stay in the game, so it's a good sign. Second and 16 now. So here's your vertical. Second and 16 for the Knights. Aerial attack here. And that offensive line of these uh, St. Mary's Knights got to give them a little more time to set and throw. Maybe they'll practice the draw here and fake a pass. Yeah, you could uh, send them wide and then do a draw, but they're going to go to there's, their reliable Trudeau. receiver, Trudeau. He's got enough for a gain of about seven or eight, but uh, not enough. Looking for a Good call for the flag, yards, he doesn't get it. Wow, yeah. The, Looked like he did the, get a the 40 yard the defender line. did maybe get a something down. in his face mask, but it's definitely a up high tackle, but no call. So it's third down and about six for the St. Mary's Knights. Ethan Carcini and it happens tackle. in real time, so it's tough for those officials to see whether it was uh, really a, a face mask or, or an infraction on the play, but uh, play continues. Third and six is the call, and that'll bring back Carter to do the punting. Horse collar, okay. Um, we got word from the booth that it appeared to be a horse collar, but again, like I said, in real time, these officials are doing a great job. And uh, Carter is back now for the third. Oh, there's a fake, and it's inside. Flag on the play. 
Carter does a nice job selling it. Still on the ground, back in the backfield. And Wardell no, runs it all the way down to the 20. The first down, Unfortunately, the there's a flag the there. And we'll wait to see what that call is. It looked like everything was good on the line of scrimmage. And yeah, looks like sure. that flag came back in the in the backfield, so we'll have to see where that occurred. Carter pleading his case. I'm assuming yes, that that's going to go against the Knights. Repeat third down. And again, there's one of those plays. I mentioned that the, he, that's about the territory where you try the fake. It worked to perfection. One little problem was the flag thrown in the backfield. So yep. that'll bring it back and take them out of fake punt territory with a third and at least 11. So unfortunately for the Knights, this uh, drive stalls out. We'll bring up another third down. Unless they, they de no, they won't decline it because it's third down. Yeah, I oh, think they Sorry, they did decline it. No, because they had enough to gain the first down. So if they decline it, that means it's a St. Mary's first down. So we'll have to see what uh, the ruling is on the field. Got me a little confused here, but uh, chime in and coach if you um, yeah, can no, sort I'm, it out. I'm, I'm not speaking because I'm thinking because hey, so the yeah, ball's yeah, at the yeah, 20, yeah. right? But the play wasn't at the 20, if I recall, right? First down, like, St. Mary's yeah. okay. on the quarter 20. So it must have been a flag against the quarter Colts. Right? Okay, I'm, yeah, I'm, it had to have yeah. been. <laughs> for, yeah, for the, Col for the Knights to maintain the ball, so... Um, they don't have a yeah. The rest don't have their mics on like they yeah, usually do. It's yeah. a little, little makes, bit interesting. Makes our job a little tougher. Yeah, we need some danger pay for that. <laughs> and Tucker addressing his offense. First down from the twenty. And the snap. Oh And no. a time violation that'll probably go against. No, him. it was. I think it was offside. Oh, was it I a saw. Jump? Okay. I saw Jaden Trudeau jump and then. Uh, a core cold pointed right at him, so that's what I believe the call is. Yeah, five yards, so that will be a uh, okay. So first and fifteen on the offside against St. Mary's, and again, both these teams suffering a little bit of laps sometimes and uh, and uh, in execution and costing them. Hopefully, it doesn't cost the St. Mary's Knights on this drive as they continue to march. Now it's from so the twenty-five. The against St. Mary's, it's first and fifteen. First and 15 from the 25. Lutzi in the backfield. Empties it out. Oh, nice. Screen pass to 31. Wardell, he's got some wheels. He's able to look inside. He's oh. going to make it to the oh. house. Oh. Harley Wardell oh. with the scamper from wow. 25. Wardell scampers for 25 yards you at the major. You can't teach speed, but uh, yeah. he had a nice little lane there with a couple of nice blocks downfield. Second phase, so nicely done for Harley Wardell to follow his blocking into the end zone and make the score 20 to 7 for these St. Mary's Knights. There was no chance of anybody catching uh, Harley Wardell there. He just, once he caught, once he turned another gear, he was just gone. And the uh, Cora fans in this arena are used to cheering a fair bit, but they're. Stone cold quiet right now. They're a little uh, on their heels, but uh, 5.07 to go in the second quarter. There's lots of game left. There's that quad overload bringing it in for the single point. And snap is good. Ball is down. Nate there Carter is. with another point for his third of the contest. Nate Carter's kick is up and good. <laughs> and again, seven, St. a 25 there yard Wardell scamper to the end zone makes the score 21 7. So Obviously not the uh, start that the uh, Coral Colts were hoping for and probably not the uh, start that the fans were expecting. Um, but nonetheless, yeah. like I said, lots of game left, but uh, Coral Colts will have to step up their game here and get back to the old drawing board and go back to what was uh, successful for them the first uh, few weeks of the season. You know, it's not a knock on St. Mary's to say uh, Cora is a favorite because Cora was clearly the... Uh, Maybe not the, the better team, obviously, not what uh, the score is showing us right now, but they were the, uh, they got the bigger roster. They have Nathan Gazzetti. They kind of have that, uh, they won last year. So they kind of have all of that pressure on them. And uh, St. Mary's is coming out and they're just outplaying them right now. That's clearly what it is. It might be a case of Cora kind of underestimating their opponent. I'm not sure. Or it just might be St. Mary's is the better football team. Well, any of those uh, possibilities could exist, but. Uh one thing you can be sure of, the Tom Annett-led uh, Colts will not roll over and die here. No, They'll no. be coming back uh, with 5.07. 
hopefully trim the fat here and try to get back to within six or seven points uh, with a touchdown here. But uh, Vecchio on to kick for St. Mary's. And they did that little scooch play there, the onside kick a couple of games ago, which really worked yeah. well, but they'll probably save that one for the playoffs. He'll be looking to kick deep, and he kicks nice. to. Nice. That's number 23. No. That might be 38 Dickinson, but uh, we'll get the number on that one. But a nice job tackling by the St. Mary's Knights after returnable 15 yards. Thank you, an excellent kick. Nice punt. Or Great kick, return. rather. Winga Shawana coming up a little lame for the Knights, but uh, I'm sure you'll take a breather and come on back strong. So Dickinson yeah. with the uh, third. Blondo with the oh, tackle. It says 27 on the scoreboard, but I'm going to go to the booth here and ask. It is 21, so that kick, that extra point was good by Carter. It appeared yeah. to be good. So we'll just uh, remind the officials that it is 21 to 7, 4.59 to go in the first half. Cora Colts taking over. They run right. And they're going, again is Gazzetti run out of bounds. Gazzetti gets the outside. A nice job and stringing it out to the sideline. And uh, Knights can live to fight another day if they do that. For 20, Lander Tricartan to force him out. Tricartan with the stop, forcing him out of bounds. And uh, that's what you want to do. I mean, you either get four guys tackling uh, Gazzetti or leave him nowhere to run and yeah. angle him to the uh, sidelines. As we mentioned, he's going to get his yards, but you have to limit that. And uh, it's Knights so far doing a great job. And we mentioned it in... Oh. That's a 10-yard penalty okay. against Cora. That'll back them up. 10-yard penalty to Cora, backing it up. I think it was an illegal substitution penalty. Again, those yeah, little to costly be. mistakes that uh, you want to rectify in the second half or else they might come back to bite you. Um, we went to the booth and asked for clarification on the score, and it was indeed a wide right on the extra point. So what looked to be a good uh, extra point by Carter was actually wide, so that uh, explains the 20-7 to 7 count. Nice job again by St. Mary's to stop on first and 20. Allow a few but yards, but uh, the end. bringing up second and 18 maybe. Yeah, it looks about that. Uh, not really not really helping your case Cole here. Barber, Still scary. pretty deep into your own end. Going to get up to about your own 22-yard line, but tackle. either way, you're going to need Keaton a big run by Zetti or just a long bomb throw and long to get out of Cora. this uh, pickle the way St. Mary's is playing today. Yeah. And they got Crusoe wide here again, and uh, although unlikely, maybe they go for the long bomb and a pass, but they look to pass to the reverse inside trap. Oh, okay, and nicely defended. Balls loose on the deck, and we'll see if they recover. Gazzetti hands off. Gazzetti Carchini. hands off He's to Carchini inside. As he crosses the line of scrimmage. And again, a nice job of the St. Mary's Knights to stay home wow. and read that because uh, most of it would flow Noah with the Gazzetti, Boyer. right? So Noah Bohr, her number 40, stepping with up the for the Knights and making a big Gain stop. Gain of about six Mary's yards, Knights. five yards. And It'll set up third and long for the Colts. Again, giving them five, six yards is... Uh, Money in the bank every time for the Knights, especially in a yep. second and 16 situation. Now we're faced with a third and 12, 13 year, yards, and uh, I would anticipate the Colts on a punt. And at some point, you want to watch that fake punt too, but I think deep in this territory, they're going to elect to kick it out. And Vecchio with another good penetration, almost enough to make the stop there. Nice Block out front for Trudeau, but can't get loose. Brought Trudeau down by a, a number of Cora Colts. A nice gang tackling. Gets swarmed and by number some Colts. 10, Logan McGregor leading the way. And a return of maybe three on the play by Trudeau. A couple times he backpedaled there and tried to uh, crank it up and yep. got caught with a. a Tackle by committee by the Colts. So a nice job on the uh, punt coverage, but still a nice place to start from inside the Colts line at the 50. Tucker looking to continue his press of day, and I'm thinking if they score again here to make it 26 uh, 7 before the half, you might see a two point conversion. Yeah. Maybe that quad's overload and they leave it out there First and try to St. Mary's execute that. Cora, 50. It's just a perfect opportunity for St. Mary's here. And a perfect storm so far with. Uh, 
the Knights leading 20 to 7. I don't think they would expect to be leading by this uh, score. Or no. But uh, they're playing well. And Makes it up to the, almost to the 45. Yeah. Wardell grabbing his ankle go after a three yard gain or two yard gain, maybe. Evan Navello with the tackle. Navello and uh, a stop for the Cora Colts. So. And uh, we mentioned earlier that the St. Mary's Knights are supporting the October month uh, for breast cancer and uh, all decked out in their pink, which goes nicely with the maroon. And uh, obviously a little special momentum, uh, sorry, special token of appreciation. Uh, all the Knights are wearing so stickers on their helmet uh, in support of Miss Christiane Monaco, sorry, of course, the seven. wife of uh, Coach Jim Monaco, who is uh, battling hard against uh, cancer and undergoing treatment and uh, is doing quite well, always in great spirits and uh, congratulations and, and, and much luck going forward, Christiane, as you, uh, and you continue to battle this fight. As these guys battle in the trenches, we forget about the battles that people are facing with uh, medical challenges and obviously Christiane uh, looking to kick butt for cancer and, and uh, the boys throwing a nice little tribute by uh, wearing stickers on their buckets uh, in support of Coach Monaco's wife. So our thoughts and prayers are with you and your family on this big Thanksgiving weekend. We give thanks to all our fans and all of you that are battling. Much love and back to the action here. 303 to go. 20 to 7. Maddie Tucker and the Knights looking to score again before the end of half. Three minute warning coming up. Trudeau in motion, looks to pass. He's got a man, he's got Carter outside. There's Whoa. another high tackle. And that'll bring a first Pass down even Carter. closer to the end zone. Good for a first down. Lots of these tough high tackles. Karkidi, the victim, I think, on this one. No? Okay. No, I just, uh, I don't understand why you, you gotta be able to square up and wrap him up in op open field tackle, and, or an open field tackle, it's just, that's not going to fly in the modern uh, game anymore. And again, a nice, uh, nice job, Karkita having himself a great day, but uh, got caught on that one up high. And uh, of course, uh, it makes it hard when Carter is uh, springing loose and trying to get free. And uh, we talked about escapability with Gazzetti and and uh, Wardell, but uh, Carter's no different. He uh, he catches the ball and then he makes moves to get away and add the yak uh, yards after the catch, and uh, he's pretty effective at it. Sometimes you end up sliding up and. Uh, Pulling them down, uh, not a not an intentional violent play, but no. uh, we want to keep these guys safe. And uh, nice job by Carter to gain the extra yards, and then so the penalty, tack on the penalty. Over 15 yards it's brings it to about the 25 yard line. Score 25. And it looks like a timeout called. Maybe St. Mary's is called. St. St. Mary's, uh, remaining. Brass doesn't like the setup they had, looking inside the 25, trying to get to the red zone and beyond. 2:45 to go in this great action-packed uh, game. And Coach uh, 27 doesn't indicate how close the score is. And uh, again, 13 points. There's only two scores. And uh, the way these offenses operate, uh, that lead could dissipate easily for the St. Mary's Knights if they're not careful. So. Yep, a couple of quick Gazzetti runs, get into the end zone, two-point conversion, end zone. It's a whole new game, so... The Cora Colts team don't need to. We can say it as many times as we want. It'll still ring true. You can't fall asleep against them. They're gonna hurt you at some point throughout the game, and you got to be able to contain them. And right now, the St. Mary's Knights are containing them just fine. Yeah, and I really like that job with a uh, sweep uh, Gazzetti out to the right, sweep him out to the right, and then sweep him out to the right, and then on the on the you know as you expect. Gazzetti and you want your defense to flow with him because he's the big threat they uh, do an inside trap or a reverse inside to uh, to mm -hmm. the other back and, and that's uh, been defended well by the St. Mary's Knights that's a three minute I'm warning. sure they're going to go back to that so at the half uh, I'm sure the St. Mary's Knights coaches are going to be reminding their guys to stay home for that and they've yeah. done a nice job so far. Here's Tucker with the handoff to Blonda. Blonda bounces outside he needs one block He's got 20, making a block for him to Carden. He's able to scamper in Blonde to the end zone. So there is a flag on the play. 25 yards to the house. We do have a That's down. usually a hold against the St. Mary's Knights, but we'll see where the flag comes. But uh, 22, Blonda with a nice run. Yeah, Started wow. Started out left, able to come back to a few blocks. Tricartan downfield in second phase, just sometimes with just a hand on a hat, uh, shoulder enough to turn a guy and 
Blonde to cutting it back and able to run it in for a touchdown, but doesn't look like it's going to last. As the referees come over here, yeah, we got a hold old. against St. Mary. So unfortunately for Blonda and the Knights, a great uh, run negated. Uh, why not go back to that coach? Just throw it right back in their face and run yeah, the same play. I think so. I mean, so it's tenure and penalty against the Knights. They can stop the worst case scenario. You're, you're, you're probably not the way your offensive line's been holding. You're probably not uh, going to lose yards. So I. Don't see why that wouldn't be the uh, mo, or if not, maybe look for Jaden Trudeau in the air. Yeah. You know, I do. I do love the passing uh, ability of this St. Mary's team, so I think you need to go there whenever you can. Yeah, and the only obstacle of running the ball is a first and twenty is a long way to go just to get the move of the sticks. Yeah, it's two thirty-eight. You don't want to give the ball back to. Oh, there he goes, Carter through him. He makes a oh. bust, and he could go. Oh, oh my what goodness. a beautiful he stop! By one and only Nick Gazzetti. Wow. There's, there, there's one guy that's going to catch that Carter inside 20 on a sprint. It's Nathan Gazzetti, and he's able to take him down at about the 3 Nathan 4 Gazzetti yard line. Nathan a beautiful touchdown saving tackle. Uh, by the shoestrings as Carter was celebrating. He was in for the big score, and he was loving it. A beautiful move to break through a seam and get down the sideline. Tiptoeing his way to the end zone, but Gazzetti stopping him on the three. But nice... Uh, Nice drive put together by these Knights and uh, now inside the three. I think here you go back to Blonda who ran a hard ball there on the last one. Yeah, smash I think. It. You got, uh, you got, two, you got two downs to smash straight ahead. You're on the four. They're running up to the ball, so let's hurry up offense. Trying to surprise Colts defense. Tucker in the shotgun. He gets the snap. He's handing off to Blonda and straight ahead is Blonda and he's... In for it. Oh, no sign yet. No, no sign. He was stopped uh, oh. just short. A beautiful stop then by the Cora Colts. As I thought he was rambling. Yeah, I thought he was in too. Scrambling in for the fourth touchdown of the he half for the Knights, but stopped at the one. So I'm old school coach. I say give it to Rathman right up the middle. <laughs> I say quarterback pound, sneak. Pound the ball. Yeah, with a line, a yard off the line. Gazzetti with the tackle. And the coach called it, and Tucker's going to take it on the quarterback keeper. And he's stopped, but initial serve. Tucker with the touchdown. Matty Tucker. Hardest yard Matty Tucker's going to earn, but uh, he did earn it for the six. They're going to roll him out. And like I said, probably stay on for two, so they shouldn't celebrate too much yet. 26-2, you want to go on for two yeah, two points instead of the extra? Oh, yeah, I think you go Make it a 21-point game rather than a 20-point game. I think you definitely In case it comes back it. to haunt you. That way they've been running the ball and passing the ball. Maybe you throw an end zone, a little flare to, uh, or a, a fade route to any of those receivers. Carter, and here we go. We set up the quads with the big boys out front. You got Meade. Oh, this is going to be a fake. I got to imagine. I imagine they got to go for two here. Yeah. So, eight's got to get his knee off the ground. No. Oh. They elect to play the single. Kick is up and good. And there it is. 20 point and game. It 20 point game. So, let's hope that doesn't come back to haunt them a little later. It's a 20 point difference here. 27 to 7. Your St. Mary's Knights marching again against this pretty good Colts defense, but. Uh, Defense just not having the answer this first half. Yeah, and the core of Colts offense haven't, hasn't had the answer either, really. Well, yeah. the, the good news is both these teams have eyes in the sky, and they're watching, and they're uh, you know, um, talking about uh, what their plan is at halftime to go in and make some adjustments. Yeah. Every, every good team is going to make some adjustments. Uh, so you can expect that Tom Annett and his crew is gonna, are going to be in the, in the booth and uh, talking in the dressing room about uh, how to stop uh, this offense. It's uh, had some success today for the Knights. And on the flip side, you know that uh, uh, the Knights staff is going to remind these guys staying home and uh, staying disciplined and going on the hard counts and, uh, and not biting and, and uh, shutting down this potent offense that... Uh, has yet for Nathan Gazzetti to get uncorked because, like I said, you can limit him, but you're not going to ever stop uh, yep. a guy like Gazzetti. 
and and we keep harping on uh, not harping on but praising uh, uh, Nathan Gazzetti but they have a lot of other weapons that you can go to Cole Barbo's had a great game running the ball some tough hard yards in the middle they've got some uh, receivers that can get up and get that ball Arwin Shafi we haven't seen him yet but he's a, ter a terrific uh, running back uh, you know so Ty Beaupre, another kid, and Ethan Carbone, great athletes that could, you know, break a game wide open on one play, so. Here we go, St. Mary's in kickoff formation, number 21, Nick Vecchio back to kick it. I say, I say send it long. Absolutely. Oh. He's going to squib it. Looks like, takes a bounce, 56, picks it, or, sorry, bounces to 21. 21, scampers across, almost Squid out to the 40. Bounces off one core player. He's eventually fielded by Ethan Torreira. by Logan Anderson, but a bounce off of 56. Uh, I don't have a number for 56. Tackle by number 11, Kieran Juma. Kieran Juma on the tackle. First and 10 corner from their own. So those squib kicks, although they don't go deep in distance, they uh, certainly wreak some havoc when they take a bounce. And uh, you got those sure hands guys deep. Yard line. You got the big linemen uh, blocking out, and uh, they're not always... Uh, uh, your hands people so yep. Colts did a nice job there 21 uh, Logan Anderson nice job to scoop that ball up and gain a couple of positive yards and set up their offense at about the 40 yard line here we go Cora getting ready for first here comes Gazzetti can they stop him and they do a nice job 99 hand off to Gazzetti you can't get to the outside really 91. easy 99 Greg Matthews and 91 Cohen Carrillo for the tackle in there all for the tackle and again that's what I'm talking about the, the, the gang tackling was going to have to be a factor the uh, tackling by committee and uh, we mentioned earlier uh, you can't take Gazzetti down just one guy and you can't take him down uh, trying to catch from behind so uh, nice job on yeah. that play to keep Gazzetti to uh, a zero gain on the play so here we go, they're motioning right Clock's hand off running. inside and again, a lot of misdirection, hoping to get the defense flowing, but a uh, couple of hard yards. Matheson not Cole. having it. Cole Barbo. Cole Barbo on the carry. 96 Mead. The Valentin. Oh, the Valentin on the, on the stop. So again, the Valentin Mead. Uh, Matheson all just having a heyday, and knowing those boys as I do. I know that they're smiling so big right now and loving what they're doing, enjoying the game as the, as you should as you play this game. You play with passion, you play with heart, yeah. and uh, when it goes uh, the way you're you practice and uh, prepared for, it's a it's a great feeling. And those guys must be on cloud nine. But uh, again, only 121 to go left in the second quarter, so still a lot of ball left. And if you're going to switch over to watch the Jays, it's not going to happen. Oh. I thought you were uh, like two or three <laughs> days late on news. I was wondering where that was coming from, Scott. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. I almost forgot. Uh, well, it's a good thing I'm not a gambling man because I would have lost my shirt on them. But uh, Oh, there's college football tomorrow anyways. Yeah. Speaking of college football, and uh, while we take a break here, I wanted to remind you that Michigan at Minnesota tomorrow features one of our own Drew Viotto, a former student at uh, St. Paul's Patriots, and uh, his dad, Ross Viotto, who is a standout at the St. Mary's Knights, uh, St. Mary's College in his high school years and played again for the Sioux Storm in the senior loop. Uh, their son, Drew, is a uh, quarterback for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Oh, wow. They take on first rank Michigan tomorrow at Minnesota. Again, an underdog situation, but we want to give a shout out to him and uh, Wish them all the best of luck. Nathan Palmer down there to visit his chum. And uh, uh, Chris Viotto, his cousin, down there watching and uh, cheering them on. Then again, an underdog against number one in Michigan. But uh, again, expecting big things and a great career down the path for Mr. Drew Viotto. Let me tell you, they got a great stadium. Do they? Uh, you, oh, yeah, I've been there twice. TCF Bank Stadium. It's fantastic. Nicely done and looks like... Trudeau with a nice run out past the 50. And if you want to watch that game, it's on Peacock Channel at 7.30 on Jayden tomorrow Trudeau Saturday. So takes it and goes back around. A big shout out to Ross, Andrea, Drew, and it. Sister Taylor. It'll be first and 10 St. Mary's. As say in Minnesota, Ski Yoma. Yep. I was a... Uh, I'm more of a Big Ten fan now, but I did have a little bit of uh, love for the Gophers for about 
decade because they're so close to Thunder Bay, right? Just a six-hour drive. So I tuned into a lot of Gopher games. They had some great players. They had Antoine Winfield Jr. played there, uh, the receiver for the Baltimore Ravens. Can't think of his name now. But they had some pretty good players playing for uh, Minnesota. Great job for a local boy doing us proud, so I'll keep yeah. up the great work. Tucker in shotgun. Gets the ball, hands it off to 22. Is that uh, Blonda? He gets loose. He's got a block. Oh, oh front. Here goes Blonda. Oh, nice pursuit by Ethan Karkidi, or else he was gone for a big game. Nice job by Karkidi. Trapped down by number 51. Ethan Blonda gets a little fired up as he gets off the Great ball. Great tackle but, by uh, Karkidi. Nice job almost to the first down marker. We'll see on the spot. And again, we talked about uh, Christian Monaco and Lenny Monaco earlier in the day. We talked about local boys doing well uh, playing ball uh, beyond the uh, Sault Ste. Marie boundaries here. And you talk about Hunter Musso playing uh, down at St. FX. And, uh, first and 10, St. Mary's. Uh, Dylan Monaco uh, playing at uh, Bishop's uh, this weekend. So Michael Nicoletta as well as many others uh, <laughs> to escape my mind right now. Tucker throwing the flag. Didn't look like it got outside the tackle box, so that'll come back. Intentional grounding. Matty Tucker ineligible. tries to get out of trouble. Intentional Crosses grounding, it. rather? I believe, yeah, intentional grounding would be the call. Where's Michael uh, Nicoletta playing? At, with Dylan at Bishop's Gators. So Michael Nicoletta. It's intentional grounding uh, against St. Mary's. With Bishop's, Ga Bishop's Gators, where Dylan Monaco plays. So teammates... Claire Saints on the field again this year with, uh, oh, I'm going to miss some of these guys, uh, Seamus Parlo, uh, Nick Carter, brother of Nate Carter that's here today, Terry Dunster, uh, Brandon Vecchio, uh, <laughs> thank you, Daniel Bombaco, and uh, one other that I'm going to get from the booth here, but uh, St. Clair uh, Saints, nice funnel uh, to, to take all of our Sault Ste. Marie All-Stars and Give him a chance at education and athletics. So congratulations to them. Tucker rolls out. He's got Trudeau. He's looking for a block. McPherson delivers. Trudeau out past the 45-yard line. Tucker to Trudeau. And, and Trudeau's got to be careful. He's going to get himself He gets over 12 yards and gets out past the what original a nice line game of after a little down and distance. Long eight still for the first down. But... Uh, with 23 seconds to go, we might air it out and uh, a little too far for a field goal attempt or a deep punt for a rouge. Metcalf. But yeah, I, I don't know. I believe about. 67. They're doing a mass substitution, the so they got something tackle. coming here. But like, must be looking for the punt. Yeah, I guess you're going for the rouge. All right. Well, Carter off to cork one here uh, as he's going to be punting from around his 52 yard line. So 58 yards to. End zone. I don't know if I'm a big fan of this play, but uh, yeah, I think you just gotta air it out. <laughs> and is Gazzetti back to receive? Is the million-dollar question? Doesn't look like it. Looks like Dickinson's back, among others. But nice boot, and uh, prove me wrong, Nate. Get a bounce. Ball's oh, loose. Oh. And balls on the ground. Lutzi firing in to well, get it, but it looks like it was picked it. up by Cora Colts inside the fifth 10 yard line with 16.6 seconds. Cora Colts will have a last ditch effort to make hay. And do you take a knee here, coach, down 21 points, or you're going to uh, go for it and try to trim it? No, I think you take, you got two plays most, right? So I think you just try and go for it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't see the need to go for two when you're getting a reset in about five minutes, if that. So, or I don't see the need to take a knee when you're getting a reset in like two to three minutes here. I think you just, you know, try to catch him off guard. Maybe Gazzetti goes for a long run. You never know. With a guy like Nathan Gazzetti, you got a game breaker. You have the luxury to have these things be po be possible for you. Yeah, and there he goes. He called his number and he gets outside. Yeah, there he, he is. Get there and oh, my gosh. One guy to beat then. Vecchio with yeah. a flag on the play, but is able to stop him. And big, I, big. He's yeah, anyway, it's beautiful pass. run, breaks one tackle. If, gets run if out there of was bounds. ever a penalty that you and want to see your guy take, it's that one. Because yeah. yeah. if he had beaten Vecchio, or got past Vecchio, he was gone for daylight. And uh, we'll give him an extra 15 and reset and hope to stop them. 
uh, because, like I said, with Gazzetti, he was he was getting past Vecchio had it not been for that high tackle or the face mask, and he would have been gone for for an easy six. So that's a tackle I'm okay with, uh, or a penalty rather than I'm okay with, with Vecchio taken. So we'll move it out towards midfield, and uh, seven point six seconds might get two plays that's off depending on the St. Mary's. size and distance. But that'll tack on another, I think, 15 yards and a first down. And because the uh, Colts don't have a, six, they're not known for their passing game. Seconds. I think uh, this is where Back you stand and, and you key on uh, on Gazzetti. Yeah. And I don't even think you worry about that reserve, reverse because I think you got to give it to Gazzetti, and they, they do. And hopefully they can turn it back. Another run by the day. He runs into number 13, Blair Boudreau. So 1.6 seconds. Blair Boudreau, 13 with the stop for the Knights. And again, like I said. Good for eight yards. Good for two more Lundin plays. Right at the 55. Now we're down to the last Tied play, up. I would imagine, of the second quarter. At the end of the half, we're going to take a 10-minute break while the Zamboni comes on. And uh, mm -hmm. we'll be back to join you for the second half. I can't imagine you have anything more exciting to watch than this. So we'll be bringing you this last play of the first half. Cora Colts looking to score and trim this 27-7 lead that the St. Mary's Knights have put up on the board. Again, a great heavyweight tilt in this high school senior division. Can't wait to see you back for the second half. Stay yep. tuned for this last 1.6 seconds. It could be the best thing on TV this evening. <laughs> We've got a timeout here. Looks like the uh, St. Mary's defense is huddled around by the sideline. Coach giving the marching orders. Cora Colts getting last minute reminder that it's going to be Gazzetti left or <laughs> Gazzetti right, I'm, excuse me. Yeah, it's either Gazzetti left, Gazzetti right, or Gazzetti center. There's no one else who's going to touch the ball, I think. And it's going to be Brown versus Maroon. May the best man win. All the chips are in. Zeddy looking for the ball. He look it inside. And a nice job of the St. Mary's Knights to make the stop. And handoff goes the end. very short for Gazzetti. 20. I'm surprised he did the inside handoff. I yeah. was giving him some speed on the outside where he's most dangerous. But uh, that brings the end of the first half. Tackle to a close. 27-7 for the St. Mary's Knights over the Cora Colts. We look forward to seeing you again in 10 minutes where we bring you, right bring you the, the remainder of this fantastic game. Thanks for joining us.
All right, rock and roll football fans, we are joined here on SueSports.com. Thanks for joining us for the second half of this tilt uh, between the St. Mary's Knights and the Cora Colts. And a bit of a surprise, uh, the St. Mary's Knights are up 27 to 7, coach, and uh, yep. uh, got the Colts on their heels, but they hope to keep them there. But uh, I'm sure that the Colts will have something to answer in the second half, and they won't go, down, go away lightly. Yeah, it's been a good game. Uh, well, it's definitely not what we expected, regardless of if it's been a good game or not. I've, I've enjoyed it. It's been a, a good battle. But the core Colts have been pretty slow offensively, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, Gazzetti's had a couple nice runs, but other than that, you haven't really seen them threaten as much as you'd uh, like them to. No, they're uh, certainly uh, counting on uh, Gazzetti to get uh, unhinged here, and uh, obviously that can happen in a single play, and uh, you make things happen, but uh, the Cora Colts are set to kick off. We've got Trudeau deep and uh, Wardell deep, which is a good sign for the Knights because he was hobbling off at halftime, but uh, looks to be good to go for the second half. Jaden Trudeau Ooh. finds a seam, looks up, and he's got a move. He's got one block to catch. He catches it, and then he's oh able to gosh. make it down the sideline. Cutting back to wait for his defender, his supporters, and a nice tackle out of bounds by Jayden number Trudeau 19. Jaden Trudeau a beautiful run back. 19 the on the yard line. tackle. But, Gets out uh, to the 50 yard line. What a beautiful job making people Colts. miss. And uh, again, you can't teach speed. And uh, nice job by Jaden Trudeau to get out inside the 50. Eventually, uh, Ty Koski Colts. with the tackle running him out of bounds. And pretty uh, pretty remarkable seeing that that uh, kick took place five, so uh, 10 yards up. It's 54 at the 55 yards. Uh, uh, after the penalty on the last play of the second line. half. So. Uh, nice job, uh, Colts with the opportunity to pin them deep, uh, especially with the extra penalty, but uh, out past midfield into Colts territory come these St. Mary's Knights. Yeah, and you really could break the game loose if you're St. Mary's. Uh, another score here, and it just looks really, really bad. Oh. For, oh, really bad for the Colts, Trudeau. that's unfortunate. Pass intended, uh, drops it. Number That'll 14, Trudeau, down. just dropping the ball. Unfortunate. Got to be able to bring those in. And that would have been a nice catch, and uh, a few yards after, might have picked up the first down, but uh, Trudeau proven is, he is human. Uh, nice ball. I'm sure he'd uh, like to take that one again and uh, hit him right in the numbers and, and bounced out, and uh, unfortunate, uh, incomplete pass for Matty Tucker, but looking for second and 10. Here we go, second and ten at the fifty. Quarterback he's looking back. left. He's got a man. He's got to dump it off quickly, but he's caught in traffic and dropped for a nice Tucker loss. Trying to avoid the tackle. Thirty-four. It's a two. And tw Jake Carter was twenty-five. Hit almost Thirty-four. Oh, and Andreola, oh, Andreola twenty-five. Nathan Gazzetti. Is that Gazzetti playing yeah, defense? Yeah, a little bit of hope. So, so Gazzetti now Gazzetti? appearing on That'll the defensive the side of ball. So obviously some of those in-game adjustments have the uh, Colorado Colts uh, coaching staff having Gazzetti go two ways. Uh, I don't see him as a regular on the defensive side of the ball, so maybe they're uh, looking to shore up a little something that they're yep. seeing in the uh, in the secondary here with the with the Colts. So Carter back to punt. Here we go. Third and distance. Better get it off. Nice kick. Angles it towards the sideline. Takes a bounce out of bounds about the 26 yard line. Left turn immediately out of bounds on about the 25 yard line of the Colts. So a uh, nice run back by um, Trudeau on the kickoff, but uh, Knights unable to capitalize. And like you said, that would have been a great uh, momentum and uh, swing and, and a great chance to uh, for the Knights to assert themselves and yep. start the second half the way they, they ended the, the first half, but uh, Colts now looking from their 25-yard line to get uh, on the board here and reestablish their dominance as Martone is under center, hands off around the end around, oh, 67. Wow. There's a new carrier for the Colts. Steering them out of bounds are the St. Mary's Knights. 67, 67 Nathan, Nathan Hyam. Nathan Hyam carry. running that ball for. He usually wears number 17. He gets around the end, eventually tackled by Jaden Trudeau after a gain of about eight yards. 
Okay, so second and two. 67, Nathan I am. We have him on our schedule as or on our roster as 17. So now we found Hyam. We'll be able to track him and second and two on the play. Okay, quick hitter up the middle. Gains oh, enough easy. for a first down. And then some gain of about six on the play. Right Taking it the up to the 39-yard line. So a nice run, and it's easy when it's second and two. And quick hitter, and the way yeah. uh, Martone's delivering the ball. That'll be a first down for Cora. It's a uh, quick hit and ball, a yard off the ball, so the uh, Cora Colts just have to move forward for one and uh, fall forward for two. That way, that time he was able to gain an extra three or four and push it almost to the 40. So Here we go, Cora. Oh, here he goes to toss. Here's uh, Gazzetti. He's going to pop it back inside. He's going to look for a blocker, but the nice job Pitch of pursuit. Gazzetti tries to get around. Colin Mead again with a beautiful stop. And again, that's that just stop at the uh, line of Colin scrimmage. Mead a nice push. Juma with the tackle. Sets up second down. Nice job of the backers leaking out and looks like lost forcing up. And right, yeah, making right the back stop. The line of Sorry, yeah, so and Cora and just 10. looks like a shell of themselves right now. Una even Gazzetti's unable to do anything. Like, he has... It's not his fault. He has no blocks, but uh, yeah, it's just not what you expected from uh, the core Colts coming into this one. Not what I expected, at least. Oh, there's a ball hits the ground and jumps on oh, the ground. The ball's on deck and looks to as pitch to Hyam. Looks like Hyam's able to recover it at the 40 for a gain of Pulse two, but ground, uh, he ends up recovering it at about the 40-yard line. Going to Valentin, first man there to stop the play. I think that was a, a sloppy toss. Maybe the quarterback didn't uh, and eight get the, the ball. Saw it in his hands, flopped it out, uh, yep. hit the deck. Hyam was able to bounce it up, and uh, or took a nice bounce. Hyam able to reel it in and fall forward for two, but that's the third and eight. So it looks like uh, looks like Hyam's back to punt now. So a little yeah, merry-go-round of, uh, of assignments here. Hyam back to punt, nice snap. There goes Vecchio again with almost a block. He's had three near blocks today. There goes, oh, nice job by Karkidi to Trudeau stop. Trudeau it, but a five-yard run play. back before he's tackled. 51, Karkidi. Okay. It looked like uh, Trudeau got rolled up there. Nice to see he's up and on his feet. Three, yeah. Novello. Ethan Novello with also the in on the stop the there. So. St. Mary's. Here come the St. Mary's Knights, just the uh, better team so far. Yeah. And uh, like I said, uh, they've used a lot of the Trudeau uh, magic there. Yeah. And, uh, Carter's got a few of these hitch passes to the flats and uh, a few dumps. Uh, Blonda hasn't been used too much today, but he's uh, done well when he's had a chance. I don't see uh, Wardell in the backfield, but uh, let's see if they can spread the ball around, mix it up. They'll probably start doubling uh, Trudeau and being so open. We got Hyam here in a double situation with Carter. Oh, beautiful. Leaving Trudeau, Trudeau wide catch. open. So Gets out past the 50. Just, just watch the pass block the next time they do that uh, quick header to Trudeau. Like, the core Colts defensive line has no chance of getting in Ty there and, uh, making anything happen. It's just a, it's a perfect play. And you know, the way that uh, Tucker is able to deliver that ball too, if he has a little bit of time and sets his feet, he's, he's going to deliver that on the money every time. Yeah. And uh, Cora Colts overloading on this side. They're obviously looking for Trudeau and Carter on the same side of the field. They got uh, doubled here on Carter. Uh, Beaupre drawing the assignment for uh, Trudeau, which is no small task. But uh, they look at the other side of the field. They have some options out there, too. Nice jobs by the Colts to bring down Blonda. Blonda, Blonda scrambling to get yeah, some extra yards. 50, I believe, before slowed down and stopped by Gazzetti. So and I'll bring up a third down situation. That's th two and uh, three and out for, uh, for these uh, St. There. Mary's Knights. So subsequent three and outs from each team. So we'll so. see what happens next time with the Cora Colts up. And again, I can see why the St. Mary's Knights would play a little guarded, a little close to the vest, uh, not uh, putting it up in the air and risking anything pick six or um, anything dangerous, low per percentage. But these uh, Cora Colts are running uh, out of time, and they're going to have to. Release the reins a little bit, and uh, we'll see if that comes after Carter. Here we go, big Delivers punt. a punt, a beautiful kick to Carter, or by Carter, to Karkidi. He's back to receive it. Karkidi fields it. Three knights on him quickly, including He's by number five, five Rain Lutzi. Rain Lutzi, so. And number 11, Kieran Juma. 
Number 11, 11. Kieran Juma almost also in on that one. Yeah. And nice job by uh, five on special teams. Lutzi not getting many carries. Not many, many carries for Lutzi, but uh, doing a nice job on special teams. So that brings us to 27-7 with 7-10 to go. St. Mary's Knights leading. And uh, we'll be glad to bring you the rest of this game. It's going to be a shootout, so make sure that you bring the popcorn. We've got the excitement. Friday Night Lights here at Superior, Hawks, Superior Heights uh, Fieldhouse. There's the Colts, and they give it to uh, Gazzetti. He's Cole quickly goes, wrapped up. To Gazzetti. And I think the difference in this uh, game St. Mary's covers. for these St. Mary's guys is that they're uh, gang tackling. They're all Landed feeding on the ball, the ball, doing a nice job of flowing with uh, Gazzetti and stringing it out to make them get to the corner and uh, doing a great job owning that offensive line of the Colts. So obviously they've done some adjustments the last time they saw this team and uh, as the coaching staff for St. Mary's has been saying that uh, they've been working a lot of these uh, these contained drills and making sure these guys do, oh. a, do a job. Nice so pitch to Gazette. Uh, to so but That's he's caught as the line breaks because, down. Uh, number 54, Carcini, Saw someone in the stop. Call he should have probably just ran tackle. into him that's and tried to fall long. forward for some more for yardage. Just going to negatively impact the core Colts. It's going to be third and long. They're going to be forced to punt once again. And again, still a lot of game. And uh, with a, 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 offensively, Dad, you can't say it enough. They, mm -hmm. they could break one very quickly. Uh, but the, the more three and outs and uh, the, you know, the, the same area's defense causes, then... You know what? They have a chance to get their offense on the field, run down the clock, not being in a big rush. Looks like somebody doing stride jumps over there, trying to draw them offside. I don't think so. They are forced to take a timeout, I believe. So, looks like the Colts with the timeout there. Maybe they didn't have enough personnel on the field, but uh, either case, we have 27-7 lead, 6:34 to go. And again, don't go anywhere. We got a great finish here to this heavyweight battle. And this will bring the teams to a tie as uh, they would each have one loss if uh, the St. Mary's uh, yep. Knights were to hold on and, uh, and uh, pull this one out. But like I said, there's still a ton of game left. And at this time, giving thanks to football and everything it offers. Went to the well here and I quoted Vince Lombardi my coach back in high school. Actually a great uh, Green Bay Packers coach. <laughs> and uh, he was inspired today as I'm reading. I firmly believe that any man's finest hour, the greatest fulfillment of all that he holds dear is that moment when he has worked his heart out in a good cause and lies exhausted on the field of battle, victorious. So there's a little something for you to get the old juices flowing. Old Vince moving uh, both these teams here. Playing the great game of football, and the punt is good. Trudeau has it bounce in front of him. There's no uh, yards on the play. Punt. I am with the punt. Fielded by Trudeau on the return. So easy. Trudeau, no Trudeau yards fly on the play the for no yards. And you'd think that they had never practiced these no yards yeah. calls, eh? But uh, and it's easy with the paint on the wall on the uh, field. You should be able to see where five yards is and. And it seems like an easy concept, but in the heat of battle, these guys yeah. uh, occasionally slip it up, and uh, that'll allow the St. Mary's Knights uh, to come a little closer to the uprights, and uh, they'll come out here and try to march on down the field. Of course, the no, the no yards uh, penalty is a bit controversial in the Canadian football world. There's uh, talks of bringing the fair catch into the CFL, and uh, a couple of provincial so organizations are talking incurred. to bring the fair catch in, too, so... We'll see if we see it in a couple of years, but regardless, that's right. going to be a penalty, and the, uh, we'll get ready for first down. Tucker takes a snap. He's in the shotgun. He rolls out. He's got time. He's going to throw off his back foot, and it's oh, a oh, tough my throw to make. Tucker to trying to get it to Carton. To Carton. For a Just couple falls of yards, a little short. Yards incomplete. Looked like he took a back step out of that, and uh, he planted and thrown. Maybe he saw some pressure coming, but... Uh, just a little short under delivered, but uh, brings up second and ten nonetheless. 
And uh, we talked about earlier how they're uh, starting to double uh, the outside guys here with uh, Carter and Trudeau on the overload on this side. They're lending 67 high I'm out here. They had a double last series, now single coverage, but uh, they also have Gazzetti out here to prevent the speed rush. There goes Blonda up the middle, gaining seven, still on his feet. Brings up a third and three. So. Pretty, uh, Sorry, pretty uneventful third quarter. Another third and Nathan out. Gazzetti. Well, we'll see if it's a third and out, see what Shot they want to do. But it's been a lot of, uh, lot of one-two stop, one-two stop for this third quarter, kind of slowing the pace of the game down. Yeah, I don't think either team, well, St. Mary's probably wants it, but Cora definitely is not like it. Yeah, and definitely lacking the flow that the first quarter offered. Yeah. Uh, third and three, tackled by Jack Metcalf on the last play, Blown but down, uh, we're going to have a Mary's. timeout from St. Mary's. Now, obviously, they don't like the uh, call on the field, so looking to reset here. As I mentioned, uh, Jack Metcalf on the tackle on the last play. Dad, Richard, Mom, Stephanie, Sisters, Taylor. And Ellie. And obviously they're probably watching at home or in the stands here and cheering on their number 55 for the Cora Colts. And uh, we welcome them again on this fan fantastic Thanksgiving weekend. No better way than to spend it with family and friends. So thank you for joining us. 5.15 to go in the third quarter. St. Mary's Knight leading by a score of 27 to 7. So after the St. Mary's timeout, play will be blown by, back in. Third and three brings out Carter. Third for and the three for the Knights. And a surprising play again. I'm thinking that this is one where you maybe want to try for it to the three yards. Yeah. I don't think uh, Carter has the leg to make it to the end zone and watch him prove me wrong. Oh. So he, hopefully he'll get a bounce. He's into the end zone, so oh, maybe wow. they're playing the rouge, and there's a block from behind, so that'll be in the oh. end zone, and that'll be a rouge. Uh, might be a late hit here, a, a high on 21. Very hard tackle. But I, Bopre gets it out, though. I think that's a the block rouge. in the back, uh, allowing Bopre to get the ball out of the end zone, and it's a block in oh, the end zone. The it'll be awarded as safety, as far as I know, but... Uh, We'll wait and see. I've been wrong before. Did they throw a flag on St. Mary's on the tackle? Uh, they flew. I mean, it could have even been in no yards. Uh, not too sure. I'm, I could, You can't really tell if it's five yards in the end zone because it's a 20-yard end zone in Canadian football, right? So yeah. not too sure. We'll, we'll get the call in a second. That's a hold yeah. against Cora. A hold. And that's a single point for St. Mary's. Okay, anyway. so they did get the rouge. Yeah. So I was saying block in the back, but a hold nonetheless, and then it uh, occurs in the end zone when they're trying to run it out. It is awarded a rouge, and uh, that extra point brings it to 28-7. So my argument that they go for one instead of two is a moot point now as they're up 21 points. So the Cora Colts will take over at the 35-yard line, and it's getting to that time where it's urgent yeah and again without the uh, uh, focus on the passing game you as St. Mary's Knights can uh, maybe shadow an extra man towards uh, Gazzetti as you're going to see him with a, a ton of the uh, the load to carry obviously you have to respect uh, Karkidi and uh, a few of these so guys that are the single point, the to run the 35. ball but uh, first and ten Cora for, for the big play capability I think you're going to see a lot of Gazzetti as he goes in motion. There's that pitch. Carkidi out the block for him. Can't give him the corner because oh. he can do this and he's got to the corner. Vecchio pushes pitch him out of bounds Gazzetti. but he not after a big corner. gain of about 40. Beautiful run. Nice job of Gazzetti getting to the corner. But he gets run out of bounds by I think Nicholas Vecchio or Lander to Garden. And we mentioned how explosive yeah. he is and how he can run away with the, uh, the ball and uh, Outran about three Great or four. 38 yard run. 38 yards on the carry, outrunning three or four nights on the play. So, and again, it's uh, it's predictable now. It's just head to head and uh, whoever comes out on mm -hmm. top. So, a great job by uh, Gazzetti to 
get over the line of scrimmage, turn the corner, and try to take it up the sideline, which is where he's deadly, and he'll kill you. First and ten, Cora from the 44. All right. He's going to hand it off inside. Ooh, big hit by number 20. Good hard run. 20. Two Aaron at the tackle. Yeah. Did you see who the carrier was there? I did not. I'm sure we'll find out in a second here, or maybe not. It's a nice... Uh, off tackle run, but uh, nice what? stop. That was Carcini with the run. Good for uh, four yards. Oh, number Carcini. 51 for the Cora Colts. Second and Carcini. six for Cora. Gotcha. Second and six, and it's pretty much you got to get a first down every other play, or you're not give, really giving yourself a chance to get back in this football game. There you go. There's Gassetti inside. They got him stopped, and it looks like 74-99. Matheson, Mead, 96 on the stop, and they'll get Zetti three. Another decent carry. But it'll be third gets and three situation. He's led by number 74, Ethan Aruda, number 96. Colin Mead with the tackles. Ethan Aruda. Cannot imagine that the punt team will be coming on. it. They're not. And at this point of the game, it's at the 37-yard line facing a third and three. So they're going to go for it. You got it. And they need it here. Big stop needed here by St. Mary's. It's a quick hitter, and they got him stopped at the line of scrimmage. We'll see if they can give power forward for the first down. Looks like St. Mary's Knights are up Cole to the Barbo tiles. Cole Barbo with the carry. Cole Barbo with Tackle the by carry. Tackle with the Knights. I believe DeBoca was the first one there. DeBoca with the stop. We do have a flag on the play. Among many. Flag on the play. We'll see who it goes against. I think that's going to be an offside against Cora. But uh, if it is against the Knights, that'll be a first down. And we'll if it's against here. the Cora Colts, it'll probably be declined. And it'll be a turnover on downs. But let's see what offside the against the Knights. That'll back them up. Offside against the Knights the gives down. the Colts a first down. So, again. Nice lucky break there for the Cora Colts. And that's and that's the uh, the danger when you have a third and three or third and short. And you got to get off the ball. And you got to stop them in the backfield. And your defensive uh, line has got to just pounce. And... Uh, they're just eager to get in there and make something happen and create chaos. And uh, sometimes you get a little excitable and you jump early, and that's what happened there. So nice job by Karkidi carrying the ball, but he's tackled by 97, 99, 96. Yeah. So it looks they're arm in arm. He's Mead. hit by Derboca, Vecchio, and a couple others. Mead, Palumbo, and uh, Matheson just wreaking havoc on that offensive line of the Cora Colts and having themselves a heck of a game. So. Second and nine for the Colts. It's going to be awful hard to pick your uh, uh, Wendy's Sault Ste. Marie team and census player of the game. Lots of uh, outstanding contributions on both yeah. sides of the ball, special teams, and, of course, lots of ball let yet, so somebody might emerge as a superstar in this fourth quarter. Oh, oh a nice tackle. job by 96. Zetti. Call the hard run once again. Line. 99. 96. Grant Matheson in on the play. Making a big stop on Nathan Gazzetti, and I think that's a big of a bit of a stinger. Juma. The way Gazzetti folded up there the might uh, might be feeling a little worse for wear there, but uh, yep. stays in the game. <laughs> Two twenty-one to play in the third. The clock keeps ticking. Absolutely, and this is even in even though it's in the third quarter. This is where you want to get up on the ball if you're the Colts and save every precious second because you're not down one score, you're down three, and you yeah. got to make things happen. So, again, they're letting this clock tip tick down and uh, need to have a little bit of urgency there's Zetti's looks like he's going to be stopped after a gain of about four or five number 74 on the tackle Ethan Ruda there nice stop by Ruda Zetti tries to Shout get to the sideline to get around him but he's met by Ethan Ruda who's a colleague of mine and uh, ladies and gentlemen that's true cheering on no. both boys one plays for Cora the other plays for St. Mary's so she calls it a host divided but uh she goes home a winner tonight, and nonetheless. So, so that's going to be a first down on the turnover, and the St. Mary's takes over. No? It should be. Uh, okay, I just haven't seen Tucker yet. Uh, yeah. And he emerges from the huddle oh. here, and. Uh, yeah, perfect. Perfect. 149 to go in that third quarter. Cora subbing in some people, rolling them up late. Tucker hands off to Blonda. Blonda oh. looks oh. Blonda looks like a running back there. Taking, Blonda, taking it far. Down. 
And breaks a couple of tackles before finally being makes hauled some out of nice hard yards. by 67, Nathan Hyam. And again, Bond has got to take a log off the fire. He's looking Getting a little uh, fired up. And, uh, in the first celebrations down. after the carry might end up costing. But uh, you love the passion. You love him running hard. Looked like a little Larry Zonka there blasting through. And for those of you who don't know Larry go. Zonka, I went back to the well for that one. But uh, Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins back in the day with the big bull ring on his face mask. And that was uh, the undefeated season if I if I. He was, he was there. there yes, you go. correct. And Tucker back in the shotgun. 121 to go. And a nice handoff again. And nice. Nice job on the carry. Blonda goes up the middle again. Is that Blonda again? Nice carry for Blonda. Gained some hard yards. Nathan Gazzetti, number 25. Nathan Gazzetti in on the tackle. Sorrell was so tackle. Ethan Sorrell helping out for Decorah Colts. And again, nothing Nathan Gazzetti can't Sorry, do. Sorry, 51. Ethan Karchidi. 51, Ethan Karchidi also that given up second and credit attack. three for the Knights. So second and three, 49 seconds to go in this quarter. Seems to never end, but yeah. lots of great football left. Seconds ticking down. And Tucker looking in the air. He rolls out. He's got the man. He's got true to open. McPherson with a nice Whoa. tackle springing him. Or a nice block. Kudo, that there. was a block by McPherson. Kudo all McDonald's the way down, down to the 41. 40. So a nice a job. Yard line, 45 yard line. McPherson making a nice block there to give his uh, receiver another, another few yards. So and that's, that's what uh, your receivers need to be doing when they're not getting called their numbers. So yeah. again, a nice job to give his uh, wide out a chance to get downfield. And another first down and into and Colts time, or Colts end. First and 10, first and first 10, 10 from the 41, 41 of the Colts. Here goes out Ethan Carcitti, just a little bit banged up. He was limping a little bit. He is getting, uh, taken out for number 94, Ashton Sochin. This will be the last play of the quarter, barring any injury. And we wait for play to resume. I want to shout out to uh, Clyde and Gunta. Grandma and Grandpa, Baba and Nima to Jack. Uh, we're watching at home today. Hopefully you're here over your jet lag and uh, ready for a big weekend of celebrating turkey here in the Sioux. So thanks for your support, and uh, here's Tucker in the shot. They're definitely he, warmer than us right now, aren't they? <laughs> and he hands off to Carmen Blonde. He's able to turn it up and make it inside oh, the 15-yard oh, oh, oh. line to the 12. To the 10-yard line. They think is any of the the end of the quarter. Not sure if it can. There is a the flag penalty. on the play around the 23-yard line. Was, it, was a flag on the tackle, or is there a block uh, up it early? Was before. It, was before? Either, it was either a block. It was probably a, or it was probably a block in the back or a hold. Realistically, that's usually okay. what it is when it's back there. But of uh, course, the, the is it offensive or defensive penalty? The quarter cannot end on. Uh, that'd be a flip of the coin for me. So. <laughs> I know it's it's different in uh, American football. I can't remember the Canadian rule. Yeah. All right, so the call is going against the St. Mary's College Knights, so they're talking about the hold on camp Mary's. captain. Hold, which negates a nice little run by uh, Londa. Again, scampering, running great. In relief of Harley Wardell, I think maybe giving Harley a little rest. He saw him come out for the second half. But oh, uh, my goodness. Another flag. Is that an OC? Uh, guaranteed. Against the? Guaranteed against the Cora Colts because they were, they were conversing, and he probably oh. said something the referee didn't like. And Again, probably oh, arguing whether totally pe pineapple the belongs on pizza, and uh, the referee wins that conversation every time. Cora, right? so. Yeah, that's unfortunate. And again, those emotions creeping so in, especially when you're down 28-7, frustrations uh, mount, and uh, when you're used to winning as Cora does, they, uh, you know, have to adjust to being in this situation, yep. and and uh, emotions getting the better of them. So. <laughs> All right, so looks like it's still the third quarter. This will be the last play, barring another penalty. St. Mary's has the ball at the 41-yard line. Here we go. There's a big hitch to oh. And a big hit. Let's hope he's okay. A big, big stop hit. on the play, number Pass 10. Pass to Trudeau is complete. 
He gets hit immediately by number 10, Logan, Logan McGregor, McGregor. On the hit. Looks like 14's up under his own power, though. It's a nice sign. Got folded up pretty good. I believe good. that's the end of the third quarter. And it'll probably bring up second and about five at the fourth quarter. Yeah. So at uh, SuSports.com here, we'd like to thank our corporate champions here on Spear Catholic District School Board, Northern Sports Excellence, Freeze Frame Photos by Bob Davies, Wendy's of Sault Ste. Marie, Team Essentials, Maximus Rose, Elite 8 Basketball Academy, and True House Sports Radio. If you are interested in having your um, business featured and highlighted on Sioux Sports TV, contact us at SuSports at gmail.com. And make sure to tell the world you're here, share your experiences, connect with other fans, and gain behind-the-scenes access to your favorite teams in Sault Ste. Marie and Algoma. For more information, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And on this Thanksgiving weekend, we want to thank all of our fans, all of our so supporters of our high school sports and, and local sports in general. We've been treated to a wonderful game here, and it's not over yet. we got one more quarter for you. The handoff inside to... Hand off to Blonda. Blonda. He goes nice up the middle job. For a yard a few two. hard yards before being taken down by number He's 94. That's by Ashton, 94, Ashton Sochin. Sochin. Yeah, second down for. That'll set up third and a uh, Sorry, third down for St. Mary's. And again, I think at this point Five you're again. happy to go kick it deep with a leg uh, with Carter into the end zone again, maybe, and uh, pull another rouge if they're unable to rescue it from the end zone. Obviously, Cora would want to bring some pressure here, maybe block this punt and take it to the house. Yeah. Some interesting thing happen. things happen late in the game uh, as you're down a few and need to push the envelope. Nice snap to Carter. Carter is able to nice. get it off, and he's pounding it into the end zone. Just short. Oh, Ball no. hits the deck. Ethan Karkidi scrambles, but brought down. Oh, he's still on his feet. He might be able to get out, but no, swarmed nice. by the St. Mary's College yeah. Knights. So wow. it looks like they have the ball, and they wow. want a touchdown. Wait, no ball. way. 21, Vecchio has the ball in his hand. Let's see what the ruling <laughs> is. I don't know if that's a touchdown. They got five referees. Nobody has their hands up yet. So oh, it's Tricarton, not uh, Vecchio, but uh, nonetheless, uh, Knights getting a little excited trying to sell the touchdown. But I think it's going to come out. It'll be a, uh, certainly a a safety because he didn't get it out of the zone. But uh, oh, it's we'll wait uh, for the call. It's not a rouge. Sorry, a rouge. I, okay. I said safety. You are correct. Okay. Because yeah, in American football, yeah. that would be a touchback, of course. Yeah. Yeah, my bad there, but uh, again, the referee's having a meeting, and uh, they'll be back with an answer shortly. What are your, uh, oh, oh, it, okay, a safety. It is a, oh. I don't think that's uh, the rouge sign, no. It should definitely be a rouge. Uh, you shouldn't, yeah, you don't get two points on tackling someone in the end zone for during a uh, after a punt, no. Definitely so, not. We'll await the call. Either yeah. way, the uh, St. Mary's Knights appear to uh, extend their lead. And okay. they put up a there single here. So there's your one point. Bring it to 29-7. Bringing the ball out to the 35-yard line for these Cora Colts who are desperately looking to get... So that's a safety get. for the Knights after everything is said and done. <laughs> safety is the call on the play. So 32-7. Uh, 11.06 to go. Lee, lead is 23 points for the St. Mary's Knights over the Cora Colts. And a bit of a surprise, Coach. Uh, uh, sometimes you can underestimate your opponent, and maybe yeah. that's the case with the Cora Colts, but they seem to come out a little flat. Maybe they're missing some personnel. They obviously miss yeah. uh, uh, Caleb Thibodeau, who's uh, not quite 100% yet, and I think it's a good decision for them to rest him for playoffs, but uh, uh, also missing... Uh, Jarrett Dewar, who is uh, scheduled to return soon from a broken leg. So after the safety is applied ankle. and the penalty, um, the ball will come out. But I think uh, so far, the and there's still the a quarter left to play, but uh, to the St. Mary's Knights have uh, imposed their will a little bit on this quarter. Uh, uh, yeah, These are full, full marks for, for showing up today for a great game. Yeah, not taking anything away from the St. Mary's Knights because they've played fantastic. This is the best they've played all year. 
But uh, the Cora Colts just don't look like themselves. They 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 look sloppy. They don't uh, they don't look motivated coming out of the huddle. So I don't really know what's going on. And up oh, the referees just did correct Sorry, there. That's not a safety. It's a two rouge, point it's safety point. to a one point rouge. So there we go. Score one for the commentators. Good guys. Yeah. So out to the fifty. First and ten for the Colts. Like we said, lots of lots of ball left, and uh, don't go anywhere. This could get it greasy as the ball is open, oh! and there's a catch made. A couple of bobbles, and it ends up in the That's hands of Ty Kosti. Pass intended to 85. Mitchell Commissar. A la Julian Edelman going and grabbing that. Unbelievable. With great concentration. Ty Kosti. Almost a 30-yard reception. Tip drill, Mitchell Commissar to Ty Kosky, And, of course, Mitchell Commissar, Probably another great saber cat. Tackle. Yeah. Uh, Dad, Matt, Mom, Stacy. Saber Cats, of course, the winners of the Ontario Champions of the summer. And uh, he, Mitchell, a big part of that. And uh, going up and getting that ball, hauling in, tipping it to Kosky for the first down. Oh, up inside, straight ahead is that Barbo again. Barbo, he goes right up the middle. Yep. Carries a few nights with him. Haven't called Barbo's name for a few minutes, but uh, he's Brad able to uh, pound it forward. Looks like gain about six or seven on the play. De Valentin and Matheson on the stop for the St. Mary's Knights. Little help so. from Nicholas Vecchio. Vecchio in on the tackle for the Knights as well. Brings up second and three. So maybe you just smash it down the throat with Barbo again. Looks to be fresh and running well with that one. Yeah, I think today where you've had no offensive success, you just got to do what ain't If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, now you might want to change your... Uh, Is Eddie with it? Change what you want to do after no Boyer and, uh, wasn't going anywhere. And number six, the guy who hasn't really looked like himself. Uh, it's hard to tackle? say that he looked bad. He definitely Sets hasn't looked bad. Two. He's had a great Gazzetti's game. Carry. Nathan Gazzetti going off of uh, four touchdowns, three touchdowns in a game, and just having a big goose egg. He has to be a bit disappointed with uh, with that result. And you know what, you mentioned he is a great running back and has the ability to break a game wide open and yeah. uh, still might yet, but uh, uh, let's give it to the St. Mary's Knights. They put a lot of big licks on him. He's had a couple stop, or on the line for the Colts. He's been tackled a few times yeah. uh, in a violent manner, and uh, on that last carry, he looked a little hesitant uh, limping into that uh, into that stack there. So maybe he's a little gun shy. Maybe That'll he's uh, up five yards. a little stinger. He came up... Uh, Gingerly on that one play, so seven. Maybe, maybe 27 is uh, is feeling the effects of uh, the St. Mary's Knights uh, defense um, wearing them down today. So, but again, all he needs is one play, and St. Mary's better not go to sleep just yet. Oh, it looks like it's coming back this way. There comes 67. Nice job of 14 Trudeau. He gives the ball to Hallam. And he goes lateral, but oh, doesn't gain any yards. Man down on the play. Ken Trudeau. Trudeau. Looks like he got rolled up on. With the tackle. Yeah, I think it's just a stinger. It's uh, number oh. number four. Keegan Derbroka. Keegan Derbroka. Yeah, just, uh, just a roll down. Have an injury right timeout. Yeah. So they're taking the injury timeout. No, get him the attention he needs. Dad Darren. Mom Jocelyn. Watching. Big fans of football and big fans of Keegan Derbroka. Looks a little shaken up, but uh, I'm sure he's going to be fine. He's not uh, not writhing in pain. Just going to get a little escort off the field here. And I'm sure he'll want to get back to finish off this game and celebrate with the boys if they're able to close it out. So if you're... <laughs> Watching on SueSports.com, Truos Radio, or if you're here in the at the field house, you've been treated to a great game, and uh, we give thanks to these boys who are giving it all yeah. on the field, working hard this Thanksgiving weekend. Again, I can't say enough how thankful we are to the officials putting their time each week, the coaches, and all the training staff, all the administration who support uh, St. Mary's and Cora football and Sault Ste. Marie high school football for the ma that matter, both the junior and si uh, senior loops. You remember to join us every 
Thursday and Friday takes until over the end of 10 from their own November. We will be bringing you everything from high school finals to NASA to OFSA. We love to cover that for you. And we thank you for supporting our sponsors. Terboka makes his way off the field and play will resume. And I'll be joining you uh, this coming Thursday, Scott. We got the uh, White Pines Wolverines taking on the St. Mary's Knights. Uh, White Pines is the, the, t the last team I have uh, to call in this league, so I'm very excited to uh, get to that one. Excellent. And again, there's uh, Blonda trying to get to Blonda the front. gets to the outside. First down, Parker. They put mark him on first down. Yard short, short, but he did a nice job to lunge forward. Excellent tackle. Almost by had Hyam. it. That'll bring second and one. Nathan Hyam on the tackle. We've got a flag on the play. And a flag, of course, comes down, raining from the sky. And we'll wait to see the call. Nice hard run by Blonda. I tell you, the, you know, uh, running with purpose, head down. Knows exactly where the first down marker is and stretches out to try to get it. Unsuccessful this time, about a yard short, but it didn't matter as the looks to be a off offside call on the play. Yep, that's a hold against St. Mary's. That'll back them up 10 no, yards. Hold. 10 They're yards back. First, down, so first and 20. The good news is straight passing down. Tucker will drop back and shotgun, and he'll look to air it out. Yep. And again, I'd like to see him get away from uh, Carter and uh, Trudeau and maybe Tricartan on the wide side. He's got single coverage there. Get some, some good wheels. Loft it up, throw him under. Oh, but to give it to Trudeau on a end around. Tricartan looking to block. Oh. And another maybe block in the back. Flag on the play regardless. Trudeau goes a long way for a few short yards. 7.46 to go. In this game, wait to see what the flag is. Another bit of a, another flag in this game. It's been ridden with. Um, Master Trudeau, it's couple unfortunate nice because it kind of has been breaking up the flow There's of this a flag one. on the play. But uh, both these teams are going to want to get rid of that. And again, selfishly as a fan, I think I want to see Metcalf the, with the tackle. 55 Metcalf with the tackle. But I was uh, saying that I'd like to see a little aerial attack. I'd like to see. Yeah, uh, yeah but, for uh, sure. But the smart money for the uh, offensive coordinator for the St. Mary's Knights is not to give them a chance. Uh, keep it on the ground and uh, pound the rock. Obviously, they got a long way to go, uh, 16, 20 yards. So that's a block from behind from St. Mary's. Block in the back again. Objectionable adds. conduct against Cora. Oh, so that's a little undisciplined for Cora. Repeat, we're going to repeat yeah, they've, been, they've been giving up those penalties all day, those, uh, you know, dare I say nonsense penalties. There's no reason to take a, an objectionable conduct penalty when you're down 21 with seven minutes left to go. Yeah. Like that's something that cannot happen if you're a championship football team. And when you're up three scores or out and down three scores, it really doesn't affect the outcome of the game, but in yeah. a close game, it can be very costly. And there's a Whoa! nice ball. Oh, it rolls out. <laughs> it's Lander to Carton. And as I mentioned, Somewhere beyond the 35 they, yard line. they didn't do the fly to pay dirt, but uh, that's a nice out pattern and a beautiful ball thrown where only Lander to Carton could uh, haul it in, and he did just Logan that. McGregor. Close the gap, bringing up Running a about a bounds just before. Second and four, but uh, the first down marker. Saying there's a chance, so. Yeah. Second and four from the 38 yard line. We'll need to make it to the 42 to uh, move the sticks. and. As the Knights, you just want to get another first down, move the sticks, run some time off the clock, get it down to a manageable spot. You're up to 21 right now, 22 points. As Blonda Blond Blond continues to run hard, we won't get out to first down, down territory, but uh, enough to give uh, Carter a nice little landing strip to uh, launch this ball into the night sky, and uh, hopefully the Knights... Or, or the Knights are hoping to cover deep and not allow a big run back. Um, we haven't seen Gazzetti as a Back returner, there. and maybe Couldn't they really don't want to use him as a returner, but uh, late in the game, still seven minutes left, do you throw him back there and hope to him to break one out like lightning? Yeah, I don't see why not. I, I, There's no reason to not do whatever you think is going to work right now. Your team has not played up to the standard that they're used to playing up to. So you just have to do whatever you can to try and salvage something. But it doesn't look like it's Gazzetti. It looks like it's 51 who's going back. That is going to be um, Ethan Car Carcidi. Yep. So 
And Kirky's been running uh, the lion's share of those uh, punts and kickoffs back. So yeah. he's back there, and he's an able returner. But uh, maybe Gazzetti's just a little something. That's an easy kick. Hyam tries to field it, but it goes out of bounds. Hyam to field it. Uh, kick is out of bounds. And it's a nice deep kick. Pinning the Colts about the 35 yard line, looks like. This is probably Cora's last chance to do anything. It's Cora's ball, 639. So they're going to want to put something on the board, get a quick onside kick, and uh, make this game interesting. But definitely surprising. The, you know, preseason eighth best team in the country going to be most likely be falling to St. Mary's Knights. Sorry, eighth best team in the province preseason. And the good news about this is there's obviously another game, another weekend for the uh, Knights who play the Wolverines, and the uh, Cora Colts will uh, reset and uh, take on the Spear Knights, Spear Heights next week. Um, and knowing Tom, Tom Annett and his crew, they'll be back to the old drawing board and trying to fix what uh, ails them. And uh, St. Mary's Knights better not uh, look too far ahead and uh, uh, get too excited about this win because they still have lots of games and lots of uh, battles to Pass intended for number Tackle. 81. And there's Jaden Trudeau Nick with Caruso. a defense on Caruso. Mom Lisa, Dad Mark, Devin. Martone's pass was on the money, but he's met immediately. Caruso by unable Trudeau. to pull that down, but a nice coverage no by uh, Trudeau to meet uh, just after uh, the catch was made and, yeah. and bust that loose. So, And again, Trudeau up three scores. Got to watch that uh, excessive celebration because <laughs> we can ill afford a, a penalty. So 6.25, clock is ticking, second and 10 for these Colts. They need something drastic, something big, something's worth six here. He's back to pass. He's got a nice ball thrown out to the flat or to the wings. Martone looking downfield to number 26. For 26. Arwin Shafi. Arwin Shafi. Nicholas Vecchio defending it. Vecchio on the cover. Ryan's incomplete. Incomplete. Pretty much got to do that again. And again, Mark, Martone not throwing a, a, a terrible ball. Could, could lead his receiver a little bit, uh, catch him on the fly. I think uh, the receiver had a step on him. But um, Martone doing a pretty good job today getting the ball delivered. But, uh, again, defense for St. Mary's had the answer. Had a lot of penetration in the backfield. Had nice support from the backers but coming up and making tackles. Tackling by committee. Real swarming defense for these uh, St. Mary's Knights. And uh, that might be the difference in the game. And a nice job there. On oh the no! Punt. And Trudeau Same back Mary's to ball. receive. Trudeau fields it, fumbles it, lands in and out of his hands, and right into the hands of number three, Liam Willett. Liam Willett with a lifesaver there for Trudeau as he jumps on the ball, and St. Mary's will take over at the 51 yard Ty line. Ty Bropre with the tackle. Ty Bropre in on the tackle. So we got to talk about these uh, team essentials. Uh, Wendy, Sault Ste. Marie players of the game. We got some yeah. honorable mentions here coming up in the next few minutes. But uh, uh, you know what? It's, it's so hard to pick, especially when, like we said, on the defensive side of the balls, they're doing uh, tackling by committee. So we'll have to commiserate here and uh, come up with something for us. Uh, many great candidates, many great options, and still 5:53 to play. So somebody might emerge with a big breakout in the last six minutes. So. There's Tucker, going to hand to Flanda. He's going to hang, hang on to it. Fake handoff. Ball's out to Trudeau. He's going to go down, get spun around. And Jaden Trudeau is just so much fun to watch. He is. He's very elusive and tried to make a whole lot out of nothing there. Once he got uh, closed in on, I'd like to see him put that ball away. And, uh, and uh, protect it, especially with the lead. But uh, anyway, he's always trying for the end zone. And... Uh, uh, that was for a two-yard loss. That'll set up second and twelve. Nice job. A loss of two on the play, which brings up second and twelve. Here we go, second and twelve. Uh, I I don't really know if the Cora Colts have any chance to get back in this one. It's just I think even if you you get a quick turnover and you score, you get a quick three and out. It just it feels like it's going to be too little, too late, right? So. Yeah. Especially when Blonda runs for Blonda the first down, down and ends up so. to almost the 45. Good enough for about 14 yards, 15 14 yards yard in the first down. Play and Blonda is excited to uh, march that ball. And Mason Batacchio with the tackle. Mason Batacchio stop for the Cora Colts. 
Patakio, obviously mom and dad, Frank and Nicole watching. Right on the play. Maxim, brother, super fan, cheering his, their boy on. And uh, nice job That's to make a couple of tackles today. Objectionable conduct for Cora. And, of course, as we mentioned before, you're hoping that it's not the second to any one player as that results in the usual disc uh, qualification for the following game. So if you're the coaching staff for either team with a player with an objectionable conduct under their belt, you might want to give them a powder for the rest of the game because yep. that was uh, third or fourth objectionable conduct towards the Cora Colts, maybe a couple to the bench. But uh, like I said, you don't want to have any of your stars missing next game because of a... Uh, penalty in a game it's almost out of reach yeah that's just that's nonsense you can't you can't worry about talking smack when you're down oh. that much another Tucker flag looks for Jack McPherson bounces in and out of his hands and Pulls Tucker a nice job rolling had a nice time some pretty great protection finally uh, faltered but uh, Tucker able to deliver a nice ball to McPherson just unable to squeeze it and 432, that'll bring up a second and 10. So, 432 to go, 29 7. That's going to be a wonderful. wonderful it'll be first and 20. Wonderful game here. First and 20 will be the call. I didn't see the penalty, obviously, uh, holding her. Yeah, it was a hold. Okay, so first and 20 from the 46 of the Colts. And Tucker back to pass. He's in the shotgun. He's looking. He's got the man. Oh, and Lutzi is unable to squeeze it too. Lutzi. So long way to go if it was complete to get the first down, but uh, that'll bring up second down and 20. And again, I'm not sure about that play call to the flat here when you need 620 yards, but uh, obviously uh, Lucci catches it, breaks free, single coverage, one man to beat. He can turn it up and make it happen, but uh, I'd like to see them with the first 20, second 20, do a crossing road across the middle, a slant or something, and uh, open up the field a little bit. Show a little something into the playbook so that uh, they can see it come for the playoffs time. And Tucker there's a flag on the play. At the 50. Feels like there's a flag on the play. Behind the line of scrimmage, so a sack on Tucker. I didn't see the uh, defender with the tackle, but... Uh, Feels like every play there's a flag. 85, Mitchell Commissar with the sack. i got to tell you, Coach, that I've never seen a football player wearing a hoodie. It seems it's ultimate dangerous. Yeah. Is oh, man. So I know it's uh, cold earlier today, and it's getting into the dog days of uh, fall with uh, October shining, but uh, I would think that that's a little bit, and I've seen a few of the, the players wearing the hoodies uh, under their jerseys, but it seems to be a very dangerous uh, option. But uh, Yeah, you should just stick with the uh, compression stuff. I'm kicking myself for not wearing long johns and uh, undershirt today. I, so it was I definitely Knights, wouldn't wear a hoodie if I had to put shoulder pads on over top. But, uh, for the Knights. I would just, just suggest to these young fellas to uh, stick to the back for Nike Under Cora. Armour polyester Carter compression. Does a pretty good job. And as a guy from Thunder Bay, I'm surprised that you didn't wear. Oh no! Or maybe you're immune to it now. I think I'm a little ignorant to how cold <laughs> it is down here, actually. Hyam <laughs> gets it. Tries to get uh, out. I am with the reception, but a nice the brought the down. First and ten. Twenty-two. Cora Blonda with another head. special team stop. It's uh, having a nice, great yeah. game. Is all phases, uh, running the ball well, and uh, again, honorable mention to him. He's having himself a, a little game, and uh, and uh, some great job on the special teams by the entire St. Mary's Knights uh, on that one. Uh, and and uh, I, again, I say special teams. I talk about the defense, and uh, they've been just swarming. They've been, uh, you know, imposing their will and making a difference. Uh, especially on defensive line, but even those special teams and, and uh, a lot of the same names getting called. And uh, yeah. those are some of the guys that will get honorable mention today too. Oh, oh, a nice job by the quarterback to get loose. Oh, and no. the ball's free. Oh. And number 96, Colin Mead. As he's tackled. Colin Mead with a big job on a fumble recovery. And 
Some great things happening there. That's St. Mary's ball. Over after the fumble. Um, and St. Mary's offense will take the field. So a nice job scrambling by Eric Marton, but uh, ball is stripped. Uh, I don't know if it's punched loose or if he lost yeah. the handle, but uh, nice job of the St. Mary's Knights calling me to recover. <laughs> and, and, and we're conferring about the player of the game, and we gave each other a look saying you could give it to like four different St. Mary's Knights. They've been so good today. It's uh, I'm going to take a few more minutes and think, but there's just been... I, can name four St. Mary's Knights we can give it to. It's just, it's been that kind of game for them where everybody's been doing their job. And they look up yeah. into the end zone. It looks like Carter. Yeah. Touchdown. See what I mean? Touchdown, St. Mary's. Nice fade route into Big the corner. corner. Reels it in. Nice throw over the defender, and Tucker just plays it there where Carter could catch it, and he hauls it in for the big score. That'll make the score. 35-7, so. Who could have predicted this? Absolutely. Who could have predicted the St. Mary's Knights coming out here and just smacking Cora in the mouth? Because that's what they've done today. Yeah, they've certainly dominated on both uh, sides of the ball. And uh, it's a good wake-up call for both uh, teams. Uh, Cora will have to obviously go back to the drawing board and fix a few things, but they have been steady all year. And... Uh, they will be a force again in the playoffs, so don't count them out. They'll still be the favorite. Yeah. Um, and once they get a few uh, injuries back, but uh, give full marks to St. Mary's as they go to the corner again. Thanks, go for two. Play to Jaden Trudeau. Jay Trudeau. They get to two points. Caught, completed for seven. an extra two, making it 37-7, so a 30-point game. And uh, like I said, uh, both teams, great programs. They'll uh, go back into their off week or... Uh, before the next game and they'll, they'll retool and uh, once playoff starts they will be the favorites in each of the uh, semifinals to advance obviously uh, White Pines Wolverines and Superior Heights Steelhawks will have a chance to upset uh, the these two powerhouse programs but uh, this may be a pr uh, prediction of the, the final and they another flag say nothing Never say never as another flag drops. But oh, uh, Sorry about that, Scott. No, I cut no, you off a that, little bit. That's cool. I was just going to say that uh, you might see the, these teams again. They have no more regulation season yeah. games, but uh, they might meet again in the playoffs. And uh, you can expect another great matchup. And uh, it's always great when the rivalry is locally and they change from sport to sport and from team to team, school to school. Uh, but when the, the rivalries that are established throughout the year come back and, and show up in a playoff format, anything can happen. And it's always a, a great, great action and great, uh, great football to watch. So, so Wait. again, full marks to uh, St. Mary's. And uh, moving forward, it's going to make for a great uh, playoff season. What you said earlier about Cora being the uh, favorites in to take the championship this year, I, I don't know if I can agree with that anymore. You know, going... Talking three hours ago, I'd probably pretty easily be able to tell you, yeah, I think Cora's going to even run the table and win the championship just from what I've seen. But just this is such a huge step back for uh, for the Cora Colts. And it's just not how they want to come out. And they really, really have to lock in and try to solve something the next couple weeks in practice. Uh, looks like that'll be enough. <laughs> uh. Everybody but the kicker is over the line, so uh, maybe they hadn't blown it in yet, so they'll reset at 2.54. And uh, having said that, uh, I'm sure that Tom Hannon might use that as incentive and motivation for his club. You got a uh, good kick in today. Get back to work, get back to business, and uh, use that Pertini as incentive. has to dodge the uprights. I think you have to, to because... To, uh, for redemption, out. right? The next game will be a redemption line. game for the uh, Colts, and uh, St. Mary's now will have to defend that as the, you know, the last team to emerge as victorious in the regular season. But uh, that's a nice uh, situation too, because that uh, 
uh, provided both teams win next game, next week's games, that'll end in a, a tie for first place um, with a head-to-head matchup. Uh, so they'd be co-champions in the city as they were last year, and uh, it came it ended up uh, with a great final uh, between St. Mary's and Cora. First and, and ten, uh, Cora. Um, again, like I said, Superior Heights or White Plains could surprise and, and show up in the, at the big dance, but uh, these teams are likely to meet again. Yeah. And uh, and once again, uh, these guys uh, play with a lot of pride and a lot we of passion, a lot of school, you know, uh, love for their school and, and uh, for their fans. And, and uh, it would be a great matchup no matter what uh, what the outcome. So, so again, I think this week... Uh, I guess we got a couple minutes left to uh, to mash over um, our player of the game awards, um, but maybe we can just go through a few honorable mentions for both teams. Um, again, Eric Martone didn't put up a lot of points, but he distributed the ball well. He did a nice job. Nothing to fault in him. He threw a couple of nice passes. Uh, their running game just wasn't able to get out and get established. Um, you saw Logan McGregor with some big hits on, on a few plays. Nathan Hyam came in in relief and made some nice uh, work out there. Uh, Cole Barbo, Barbo, some hard runs, hard yards uh, through the middle, hoping that uh, that Gazzetti show would show up. Uh, obviously, Gazzetti got his yards today, but uh, not the four touchdowns that we saw in the previous game as the St. Mary's defense was able to shut that down a bit. But again, Gazzetti, uh, a great, uh, great game nonetheless. Um, on the defensive side of the ball, you saw Austin Sa- Sachin for the Ashton Sachin rather for the Cora Colts making uh, making an impact and uh, other other players stepping up and, and and playing a great game for the Cora Colts. So honorable mention to those guys. Um, on the St. Mary side of the ball. I'm going to give my honorable mentions to my big dogs in the hole. Okay, uh, DeValentin, Matheson, uh, Kian Derboka with a name called Whoa. a bunch of times. As we have a breakaway, Ethan Karkidi running out to midfield. A nice little run Karkidi play. Karkidi with an absolutely beautiful run. Gets out to the 50-yard line. And again, good solid 45-plus yards before he's eventually brought down. Beautiful scamper by Karkidi out to midfield, and uh, as I was saying, talking about the defensive studs on the uh, St. Mary's Knights today, Cohen Crillo mentioned a few times, Marcus Palumbo with some tackles. Clay Lander to Carton uh, with the eventual Ethan tackle. Ruta with some big stops. What a beautiful run. Logan, or Liam Dubois Sets with a, first a and 10 car fumble from recovery. So all these guys contributing, Noah Boyer making a stop or two. Uh, some great support, some great job. Nick Vecchio with some tackles, and, uh, some great kicking. So, a lot to, lot to build on for these St. Mary's Knights, and they got to be proud of their effort today. Yeah. And uh, He runs into yeah, Wigash Shawana who tackles him. There's Shawana in a relief roll, taking down Gazzetti. And uh, nice job at 209 to keep the Cora Colts from advancing. Okay, now that we're at the two minute mark, hopefully, just going to. See this one out here. Uh, gonna very well. We've been talking Two about the players games, of the game for the past couple the minutes. I'll just uh, relay that information right now for the Cora Colts. The player of the game on their end is going to be a two way player. Number 51, Ethan Carcitti, played a great game today. So 51 Carcitti for the Colts and for the St. Mary's Knights. Just Hard run up the everywhere on the defensive side of the ball. Picking up a fumble recovery, number 96, the big man the Colin Mead. So it's always nice for a big here. lineman to uh, to get a player of the game award. Definitely the most underappreciated people on the field. Uh, def- great defensive end, Colin Mead. So Carcitti and Mead, your players of the game. They will be getting a $10 gift card to Wendy's as well as a sweet-looking Sport Essentials player of the game t-shirt. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, Colin Mead shares that uh, Wendy's gift card with his uh, defensive uh, yeah. so line. Penalties applied. That'll Fossies back up tonight. For the boys. Uh, I was thinking a uh, Baconator four ways, but uh, <laughs> I don't think that's going <laughs> to cut it for Matthews and v- v- Valentin and Derboca. So, again, a great job by that front four, setting the tone, imposing their will, like we said, and. Uh, a well-deserved uh, win for St. Mary's here, 37-7. to 7. 
We're going to play the last 151. I'm glad you joined us here. We wish everybody happy Thanksgiving. Make sure that you join us again next Thursday and Friday for the, I believe, the last week of the season before we set the uh, playoffs matchups. Thursdays and Fridays, 445 for the juniors, 730 for the seniors as Hyam, no. And off to 26. 26 for oh, Chaffee. Chaffee. Gets him five, six yards before being hauled down. Nice run, gain of six on the play by Arwen Chaffee. Bringing up second and four. Second and three is a we spot. We got Schwartz with the uh, tackle again. And it's getting a little late. Ten after ten. Definitely. Past my bedtime. Yeah, I was going to say, got a little bit of Bombers-Lions action to go home to. Awesome. Some more three-down football. There you go. Excitement. Uh, both teams at 11 and four. Excellent. And nice handoff inside. Red well by the defense of the St. Mary's Knights. Maybe enough for the first down, but the spot looks to be short by about a yard. 96. De Valentin, Mead. Mead and De Valentin on the stop. Couple others on the tackle. So again, just bolstering our choice for player of the game. Mead with another big stop. Had a fumble recovery. And the guy's engine just doesn't stop running. Right? Yeah, Mead is a great player. Uh, he's just, he's a big boy. He's an imposing player. He's everywhere. He's a... We didn't really call his name much. Uh, not saying we never called his name because he always got a fair bit of tackles, but today was a really a big coming out party for, out. The, for the young Four. guy. So it's going to be exciting to see how he's going to be able to build the momentum on the last week of the season and then into the playoffs. Absolutely. And you see Tom Anna calling time out and coming out with 115 to play, so he's got no quit in him. He's going to try a, a little something that... Uh, they may have been working on in practice and see if they can catch these uh, nights napping. So just a reminder that uh, for the rest of the regular season and into playoffs and for all your sports needs locally, cover uh, Sioux College and uh, all amateur sports here in Sault Ste. Marie. The high school basketball, the ladies are underway and can be seen on SueSports.com. Yep. so make sure you check all of our scheduling and uh, we're happy to bring it to you we're glad that you support uh, all these student athletes here in Sault Ste. Marie and we invite you back again next when Thursday and Friday for the next round which will oh. feature the St. Mary's Knights versus the Wolverines on Friday or sorry on Thursday and then again, these Cora Colts against the Spear Heights Steelhawks. And the Steelhawks showed some definite improvement uh, this week in their game yesterday and uh, and much improved, and they're going to face this tough Cora team. Well, if, then, if there's any time to get a result for the Steelhawks against a team like Cora, it might be now. You're going into Thanksgiving. You're not going to be able to practice until next Tuesday. It's, it's going to be interesting to see how these Colts bounce back. Yeah. I, th I think this is the worst time ever for Cora to uh, have a break. And there's another flag. And again, another flag just to cap, to cap off a, a slow, no-flow half. But uh, again, in the grasp, because uh, Eddie going nowhere, going backwards, they blow it down. But uh, St. Mary's want to get one last lick on the speedy back. But, uh, again, Spear Heights will have to bring their best against Cora because I'm sure that Cora won't take this uh, laying down. And they'll be back at work on Monday. Yeah. And uh, and with uh, with a eye on the t title. And so a tough play against the Knights. That'll yeah. back them up. Yeah, they're gonna have to. Uh, they're gonna have to really change some things, be a Cora, because penalty. this is not. The way we uh, this is not the way we thought Cora that this team would even be capable of of playing. Really, just so so poor. Yeah, we thought it, we thought it was going to be a tight game. It turned out not to be. But uh, like I said, uh, all these teams are, are vying for the playoffs and they're all in with a four team loop now. Yeah. But they're going to be excited. Gets it on the end. Touchdown! Carkini runs it in to trim the deficit a little bit. Carkini in on the end around, scampers towards the cone and gets inside. 37-13, they'll probably come out for the extra point. we make it 37-14 here. So a late score by the Cora Colts. 
Takes the sting out a little bit, but with one minute to go, I believe it's a mere formality. But a nice run by Karkidi, capping off his player to game performance. And again, he'll be counted on heavily going forward. Koski's kick is up and good. 37 As Koski pounds it through to make it a 37-14 score. And as I mentioned earlier, every team makes the playoffs and every team and all the coaching staffs that I've talked to are grooming for the playoffs. Yep. Six games throughout the season, every team playing each team tw uh, twice. Uh, gives you a chance to see what the tendencies are, see what their strengths are, see where they're weak and where you can exploit them. And uh, obviously lots of game film, lots of experience, lots of growth, lots of progress from all of these teams. And uh, like I said, talking to the coaches, every one of them is just hoping to hit full stride as they reach the semifinals, hoping to get a chance at the, uh, the big one, which was uh, in late October. And... Uh, Oh, late November for the uh, yeah, offset. For the offset, yeah. yeah. So, still lots of football to play. And we've just been informed that offset is in Windsor this year. So, nice little road trip and uh, go see our friends at St. Clair. Yeah. As they'll probably be vying for a national point as well. So, so St. Clair College will be hosting the uh, offset event as Lutzi is back to receive with. Vecchio yep. as well. So. And also just such a great experience. Uh, shout out to a couple members of the 2019 Westgate Tigers uh, Northern Bowl champions. Spencer Calder, Parker, Parker Jackson. Thanks for tuning in, boys. Uh, it's just such a great bonding and uh, brotherhood moment for these young athletes. And it's just, you get your off the hoodie as soon as you get there. And it's just something you'll never you'll never forget, right? So it's every team wants that opportunity. And... It's. It might be one of these two teams, Try or you like never know. It could be the Steelhawks, it could be the Wolverines. You never know what's going to happen in this sport, right? 58 seconds left. Kickoff fielded by Carter, and had the hands team up short, so uh, Carter able to pull that down and s smartly take uh, take it to the turf and uh, not try a big run back. Nobody needs an in injury here. St. Mary's comes out with their last offensive uh, sequence here. 58 seconds to go. They may have to run a few plays to run the clock down, but that's pretty much in the books. Yeah, I think they're just going to take a couple knees. And again, we thank you again for joining us on SueSports.com, True Host Radio. As we close out this one, it's been an exciting affair, a great afternoon of football with the Cora Colts topping the St. Mary's Knights in junior action. This one has been St. Mary's from the opening touchdown, up 7-0 early. Cora was able to tie it in the first quarter. St. Mary's has been able to run away with it a little bit now. And McPherson rolls out, gains about oh, seven on the keeper. Jack McPherson. He scampers for about six, seven yards. Nice gain of seven on the play, brings up to about second and three, so. How thrilled do you think uh, when I get home tonight, the girlfriend will be now that I've been talking about football for five hours and I'm going to go home and turn on more football. <laughs> uh, good luck with that. <laughs> I can't say that's a terrible idea because I came back from a weekend of St. Mary's football, Michigan football, St. Clair football. There you go. Sunday for the Detroit Lions game and when we got home I turned on the Sunday night special. So I got to get down to Ford Field. McPherson with his Calling his own number. He's got a chance to take the corner. He might have a chance to go all the way. He's looking to run number 14. He wants to get down to. And runs it all the way to the 10. So a nice job of McPherson subbing in for Tucker. Obviously the rest in Tucker's arm. 65 yards. 81 calls his number. First down, St. Mary's. Scampers for a pile. All he wanted to do is get his cousins, Ella and Maya, a touchdown. Eventually knocked out of bounds by 67. So that's who, that's who we heard uh, screaming there? That's who we heard there screaming there, yeah. If they're even watching the game, but I'm sure they'll watch it on the replay. He'll be showing everybody that's willing to watch. <laughs> uh, nice job to get it inside the 15 to the 13. Now let's see if he can throw it in for a touchdown. Let's we'll see what they do here. 33 seconds. I think it's uh, wise and proper just to take a knee here and roll at the clock. But uh, 
they might elect to run the ball to Lutzi. So. Yeah, either run or, uh, yeah, he, he's a little lackadaisical coming up to the line, so it looks like it's going to be a knee or, yeah, it's a knee. And it's a nice class of move by St. Mary's. Everybody lives to fight another day, no knee, unnecessary injuries. They're going to roll that clock in and might have to take one more knee. Great hats off to both of these teams. Yeah. Uh, Cora put up a, a valiant fight, just a little outmatched on the, today's game. St. Mary's Knights came ready to play, and uh, like I said, great things, great fireworks to happen in the playoffs, and uh, these teams will go back to work on Monday, as they always do, and, and uh, try to retool and get, uh, get back to Optimus Prime. 6.2 seconds as the clock runs out. We'll have to take one more Ladies snap. Ladies and gentlemen. And McPherson takes a knee. And that will bring the end of the game. 37-14. Your St. Mary's Knights over the Cora Colts. Thank you for joining us on SuperSports.com. From Jay, and Jay Houselander and Shaw Houselander. I'm Scott McPherson, joined by John Ostrowski. We hope you can join us again next week. Join us Thursday at 4.45. Thanks for a great evening. Happy Thanksgiving.